Yeah. Tried to reach out to some of the homies and name reached back, so now I'm like, fuck it. Now I done came up, I'm on a whole nother level, don't turn it to something it wasn't. I want it all, so I ain't leaving no paper, some people gonna call me a glutton. R.I.P. dog, middle finger to the haters, now back to this beat cause I'm busting. Yeah, back in the streets, I was running it all and living my life like I love it. I want the money, and ain't a thing in my life that I'm willing to put right above it. Rainy or sunny, if I'ma leave out the house and that 40 on me, I'ma tuck it. I've been too hungry, ain't about to take nothing from me. Paranoid, so I'm clutching, yeah. Love school. You gotta watch the people you got around you. As soon as you walk so away, they got crazy. you. They gossiping, mad that my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm spinning, huh? Why y'all was wishing me bad luck, had to back up, see the vision, huh? Others was showing me mad love, time to act up, we was with it, huh? Now they just mad that my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm winning, huh? Was in the trap, had to bag up, get my stack up, see a milli, huh? Go to the link, get my packs up, fill a back up, then I'm dishing, huh? Couldn't be with all the actors, not a factor to be winning, huh? Yeah. They gossiping, mad that my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm spinning, yeah. I'm working yeah. on getting my bag up, trying to stack up. Up, see a milli, huh? Loving the beam and he back up. I want seven sixes like I'm Philly, huh? Pink, pink, the bundle with the black guts. Trying to act up as I mash up through the city. I got my stacks up, so it's Liddy. Anyone act up, get a 50. I, I, I just be racked up, see me drippy. Moving the pack, sending out the city. Don't trust the soul, I gotta keep it with me. I edit the child of shit, it's getting iffy. But now I got back up, kinda stack up as I'm thinking, smoking on the piffy. Wifey 100, gotta keep it with me. Cause I know some bitches just out here to get me. It's a long road, the road to riches. Stories get old, they cold and vicious. Gotta be bold. The cold division Got up is all that they know Remember Living this life It get cold December Had to reship And remold my temper Now I be stepping In all my splendor You take a shot Then I'm gonna rescind Got up and mad my bag up Got my tag up So I'm spinning Huh Why y'all was wishing me Bad luck Had to back up See the vision Huh Others was showing me Mad love Time to act up We was with it Huh Now they just mad at my bag up Got my tag up So I'm winning Huh Was in the trap Had to bag up Get my stack up See a million Huh Go Yeah. I see him clock. Yeah. Morris Production. I see them clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base See them clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out Then it's back to the base. Ain't one fuck with me When I was down at the bottom So don't come around And be asking no favors Not trying to link And I don't want to tap it So don't have no hopes Of you seeing me later Laughing my way As I go to the bank With a Gucci bag full Just to drop off this paper Cruising with all the movers And shakers You know if I'm about to do it It's major Just got the navy blue clock With the laser Hop in my Bentley And block out the haters Music be coming on top Ain't no paper Smoking some gas It look just like the Lakers I do like Betty And just get my cake up Trying to do 200k on the wake up Work every day And I won't take no pay cut You can keep clocking I swear it don't phase I'm clocking They just trying to watch How I make it One of a kind So it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping This shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules If you make it I'll break it Full steam ahead I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth And come out with that Cajun Visual you see it Clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out Then it's back to the base See I'm clocking They just trying to watch How I make it One of a kind So it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping This shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules If you make it I'll break it Full steam ahead I ain't down with no Pacing, whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the basics And just like that, we are back Welcome back to another episode of the Green Table Podcast. You know we don't miss out on nothing. Uh, Frosty will be in later on. You guys don't worry. We got a super treat for you guys. Make sure that you stay until the end. Make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it to all platforms that you're able to share it to. What is up, everybody? What up? Beast with the bars. You know, you know. Got to give you guys good music. I feel like this industry and music just go hand in hand. Most of us are in the music. I can't tell you the number of studio engineers that I've met since being in, in this community. Most people do music in some way, shape, or form. Play an instrument, something. Just lovers of music. 
yeah, big congrats to Frosty McNasty, man. Y'all already know, but I'll let him tell his side of the story on his own. Yeah, that last song will be available on the Beast Coast Grower channel, and it'll be available over here on the Green Table channel. I just got to finish up the video. Um, what a week. Um, so this week has been a bit easier. If you've been on the East Coast, you know this, it's been cold and then warm and then cold and then warm. Most of us don't know what to do, but the thing is to still keep on prepping for that outdoor season. I can't tell you how many times that I've slept on the weather and just assumed that the weather was going to be trash and didn't prepare right for the springtime, didn't prepare right for the summertime, and I paid for it later on. Paid for it later on, not having enough clones, not having them big enough in time. So many different issues that I ran through, just not preparing myself based on the weather. Because the weather can flip at any given moment. You would rather be prepared than to be playing catch up. Yeah, you got to stay working. You got to stay busy. Got to stay occupied. Got to. Yeah, re ready for that outdoor season, man. That's all I've been thinking this whole time is greenhouses, outdoor season. Make sure that you got enough clones. Make sure that that first round that you're putting out is big enough that you don't have to worry about too much veg time. Don't need too much supplemental lighting and all of that other stuff. If you can get them out there a decent size, then you'll be all right. Best way to spend a Sunday night. I guess before we go any further, let's drop a bomb for the chat, though. Yeah, I know I always say it. We got the illest chat on YouTube. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah, besides that, um, I bought a new light. Um, I bought the uh, Tarantula long leg from grandmaster level because i had a couple of lights that i still needed to put up in the room so i grabbed me a couple of those uh i talk about those later on of course the medic girls is still over there killing crushing doing what they gotta do the digital screen on that one is just at that shit's next level and i have the built-in timer and everything so definitely still loving that one what up muddy bear what up yeah that was the uh that was the tarantula the tarantula eight if you guys got any questions go ahead and drop them in the chat too and then soon we will get to the topic because i just figured i'd ask people um is cocoa the most efficient way of growing is cocoa the best out of all of the different forms we got out of all of the different mediums that we got there's tons of them out there there's rock wool there's soil there's uh soilless soil there's so many different there's regular hydro with just water like which one is the most efficient, hands down, that most growers can handle? For years, I always wondered um, wh which one would be the best that you can just advise to anybody. And they always told me cocoa is the hardest. They always told me about the problems that you go through with cocoa. Then I finally decided to use it and realized that it was not a problem. The issue that most people run into is trying to treat cocoa like it's soil. You're always going to run into issues treating cocoa like it's soil. You, you can't treat them the same. If you're watering your cocoa and it takes you two or three days for it to dry before you're watering again, you shouldn't even be using cocoa because most times those people are in five gallon pots of cocoa. You want to stay away from doing stuff like that. Think of cocoa as hydro. Just strictly think of cocoa as hydro. Has to stay hydrated. Get it on a uh, watering machine. Get a uh, watering system. Get it on everything that you need to to set it up like a hydroponic system would be set up. But to use cocoa like it's going to be soil, you are going to run into issues. You're going to run into issues. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Cocoa does not like to dry out and it does not like to be overwatered. People say there's no way to overwater in cocoa. I flat out disagree with that. There is a way to overwater in cocoa. And I've seen plants that suffered from overwatering in cocoa. Not having a root mass enough, but having way too much water in there. And then when that water finally dries out, leaving back to... You could run into so many issues. So smaller pots, more frequent watering is the best method, in my opinion. And this is for any grower. This is for a first time grower. This is for a last time grower. This is for somebody that sits right in the middle where you've been able to try everything. Pro mix is good. Pro mix is good. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with really any of the soilless mediums other than the fact that the drybacks are not the same. And I can't get away with the same size pots that I could get away with with cocoa. Those are some things you just got to factor in. So no matter what, I'm going to say that cocoa hands down is the best option when it comes to growing. Hands down. It's the easiest one to work with. It's a simple method. Give it enough water to need water every day. Enough water to need water every day. That's all you got to do. 
That's all you got to do. And before you guys start asking about, yo, where can we get the stuff? Here you What's up with your Green Table family? I hope all is well. And if not, I hope you get well and stay well. Make sure that you visit Miracrop.com. That is Miracrop.com for all of your souvenir needs. Make sure that you support the channel. Visit the Patreon. Visit Frosty McNasty Patreon. Visit Beast Coast Grower Patreon for all exclusive content. And for first dibs on access to the souvenirs. So that is Miracrop.com. Make sure that you visit it. Like, subscribe, comment, peace. Because I could sense that that question was getting ready to come through the chat a hundred more times. So you guys already know what to do. Miracrop.com, all of that other good stuff. Yeah, Promix, Promix actually doesn't cost a lot. You get a big ass bale of Promix usually for roughly around 40 bucks. Promix is a good bang for your buck because for 40 bucks, you're not going to get the same amount of cocoa. Ain't, ain't no way around it. So Promix is a good one. It, I would use ProMix as a last resort. Let's say I had a setup that I had to do, but I was on a real budget and I just needed to knock one round out before I wanted to drop a lot of money on mediums and pots and all of that other stuff. I would do probably three three to five gallon pots of ProMix. So ProMix does have its place. I'm not going to sit here and just act like never use ProMix. Like, no, if I had to set up a big space right now, I'd probably do the first run ProMix, recoup off of the first run, and then use Coco in on the next one because Coco does cost more. It's something that you have to factor in, in your, uh, when, when you're getting ready to start growing. That cocoa does cost a bit more, but to me, it is oh so worth it. Oh so worth it. For veg space, you shorten the amount of space that you need in veg because you're shortening the size of the pots that you're going to be using in veg. You could fit way more one gallons than you can fit five gallons. Say that again. You could fit way more one gallons than you can fit five gallons. Pete, yeah. Uh, Promix is uh, what? Peat moss, perlite. I think vermiculite and they have a pro mix that uh has cocoa too so there's pro mix hp the high porosity pro mix and there's pro mix bx the bx is what you would use for like outdoor gardens if you lived in a really wet area and drainage was an issue you would go with the pro mix bx it's the heavier one that uh has less uh perlite inside of it um the other one is more I'm not even going to lie and say you can use it like hydro, but you can kind of use it like it could take a little bit more water. The HP. Cocoa is for lazy growers. Yeah. Yeah. Can of cocoa is the way to go. What I do is I get the can of cocoa bricks because I, I'm not sure about where all of you guys are. But for one, bricks are a lot more discreet to bring inside of the home or wherever you're going to be taking it. So uh, a box of bricks is much easier <laughs> than, than in the middle of winter. You tugging in uh, three, four bags of soil. I'm saying <laughs> snow on the ground, you bring it in four, five, six, seven bags of soil. And I'm saying that that ain't really a good look. So if you're going to be using cocoa, I will go with the can of cocoa bricks. If you get them at your hydro store, you could probably get them for around 15 bucks a brick, something like that. And you just you don't even have to add hot water. I just instinctively add hot water and Epsom salt. One one gram per gallon of Epsom salt. Put it in a tote, load it up, come back later on. Got a whole bucket of cocoa right there whole bucket of it right there and what i like most about the bricks is i know you guys worry about bringing a lot of bugs home a lot of fungus gnats a lot of things that are inside of the hydro store you don't have to worry about that with the bricks the bricks are sealed there's nothing getting inside of those bricks there's nothing living off of those bricks so i prefer the can of cocoa bricks do i buffer the bricks uh one gram per gallon of epsom salt that's it one gram per gallon of Epsom salt. And that's only because the water I'm using is tap water and it's so high in calcium that I want to make sure that it has enough magnesium to be able to do its thing by the time that I get a plant inside of it. So the only thing that I'm supercharging it with basically is just some magnesium to make sure that that cation exchange is working well. Here... In Ohio, cocoa is about the same in ProMix and peat moss is one of the best mediums you can use. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ProMix, but if I had to just pick for any grower, brand new into growing, late into growing, whatever, I could advise you to go with cocoa to get your best results in the fastest amount of time. That, that I can guarantee that if you follow the instructions, <laughs> if you follow the instructions and you don't use it like soil, then yes, you'll be fine. Spinisad, what's up with Spanibus? You should have been there. Uh, the Spanibus Cup, where was it? 
Uh, shout out to Ohio. We got a couple of Ohio people in here. What size are your plants in one gallon? Yeah, my plants are always in one gallon pots. I don't I don't like anything bigger than one gallon. And I'm not even sure if they're full one gallons. I'm not going to lie to you. I, but I just say they're one gallon pots. Um, yeah, you could grow some huge plants in some really small pots in cocoa. And that's what I really like about them. And if you follow instructions, if you give them enough water to need water every day, that's the trick. It's no secret. You guys don't have to sign up for no course. You don't have to go pay somebody bazillions of dollars to learn it. The way cocoa works the best is to give it enough water to last until the next day when it needs water again. That is it. Enough water to last until the next day when it needs water again. If you have to wait more than that day for it to dry back, dial back the amount of water you're giving it. So if you're giving it three minute feeds and you notice that the three minute feed takes two days before it could dry back, drop it back to a two minute feed. And if that two minute feed is enough to get it to the next day and it needs water again, you're sitting right inside of that perfect zone. And later on in mid flower, week four, week five, when they're starting to eat a little heavier, starting to drink a little heavier, it's fine to go ahead and put it back up a minute. It's fine to go ahead and increase the amount of time it's going to need again because they might be drinking a little bit more. It's cool to adjust, but you want to give it enough water to last into the next day. How many per light? How many one gallon pots per light? Is that what you're asking? How many one gallon pots do I use per light? I'm going one gal this year, two lights at 750 each light, 750 watts per light. That sounds good. Yes, make sure that you guys hit the like button and, and do what you got to do. Uh, Speaking of lights. All right, Green Table family, let's talk lighting for a second. What you're looking at now is the Medic Grow Smart 8. Visit MedicGrow.com for you to be able to get the Smart 8. Use the Green Table at discount and receive 10% off. The Medic Grow Smart 8 is a 760-watt LED used for commercial growers, but it's also great for small-scale growers. It has the daisy chain options. It has everything that you you can need that 660 nanometer red spectrum to be able to get those really decent blooms even though it is a full spectrum like those added 660 nanometers just put that extra oomph into the bulk stage when it comes to growing low energy puts off little to no heat you could put your hand right next to it and you could tell that the dissipation of the heat just goes so smoothly that you feel nothing when you put your hands close to it the expectancy is up to 50,000 hours with a three-year warranty on it it is plug and Play. As soon as you plug it in, that thing is ready to go. It is said to cover a 4x4 or a 5x5, but in my humble opinion, it covers a 6x6. No issue. So if you guys are looking for a light as of right now, visit MedicGrow.com, use the green table at checkout, and get you a light that not only folds... Not only does this light fold, it also has a LED screen that shows you the wattage being used, shows you your DLI, and it also has a built-in timer right to it. So no more of worrying about your timers going out or anything. The timer is built directly into the light along with the dial to be able to get it anywhere from 0 to 100% of, of efficiency. So you could turn the light up and down at will. That is the MediGrow Smart 8. Visit MediGrow.com. Use the green table at checkout. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm about to use I'm about to try seven gallon pure cocoa light depth. If you're gonna be doing outdoor, just go ahead and use ProMix. Just go ahead and use ProMix. You're not gonna see any difference. That sun is gonna force those roots to become so big. That sun is gonna force those roots to be so vigorous that you could get away with ProMix, no problem outdoor. And you can also get away with dry amendments if you're using ProMix because uh, ProMix is more soilless. So you'll be able to do some things with that that you couldn't do with cocoa that could save you a whole lot of money if you're gonna be doing light depths. Don't light depth and use cocoa. If you're gonna light depth, use ProMix or build. If you're gonna be doing pots, and you're doing depths, then make no-till pots. Just make no-till pots, 50 gallon, 30 gallon, 40 gallon, set it and forget it. Keep them shits there permanently. I don't I don't know why you guys think you're gonna be bringing pots in and out using seven, no, no-till. If you're gonna be doing light depth, no-till. You guys are trying to save money under the sun, no-till. You, you no-till soil outdoor and, and it makes it free, yeah. You don't, you don't wanna be using pots out, outdoor, that's, I don't get the point of it, uh, of using pots outdoor. I'm just going to no-till it. Uh, even if you're turning and burning, it's not going to make a difference. 50-gallon pots, whatever you're going to use, you only got to make them one time and just amend afterwards. You buying pounds of amendments for nothing, them shits last you two, three years, you you are set after that. Set after that. 
Uh, I hate pro mix last year. I did no till beds. Yeah, you keep doing the no till beds. Um, was gonna go soil, was picking up king. I heard king's mix is the shit. I heard king's mix is the shit for everything I've heard so far about king's mix is nothing but but good. Um, for my last one, I layered pro mix at the bottom, just add water for the middle layer, and the top is lush. Built boom, beautiful. Um, Beast, what's your top three cultivars? Hmm. Top three strains that I'm liking right now. Um, peanut butter cookies. Uh, you know what? I'm not growing much of what. See, this is a tough question for me. Um, it depends on what the people like. My top three is whatever everybody else's top three is. Because if you ask me, I'm not smoking nothing but OG or cookies. I'm strict on that. Uh, if it ain't OG, it ain't cookies. It's a waste of my goddamn time half the time. Unless it's a cross of one of those as well. I'll take a cross of one of those as well, depending on what it's crossed with. But uh, yeah, OG, OG, and cookies. If I had to have my choice, my top three cultivars is OG, OG, and cookies. <laughs> Can I get away with that, y'all? Y'all gonna let me get away with that? Y'all gonna let me get away with that? OG, OG, and cookies. That's my top three. <laughs> Pro mixing down the earth dry amendments recipe for the win. That's what I'm talking about. If you're gonna be using pots and you're gonna be doing depth, go ahead and get your Pro Mix on. Go ahead and get your dry amendments on. Save yourself a whole bunch of money. Don't be worried about using uh, cocoa uh, outdoor. It's going to take up a fuck ton of nutrients and it kind of offsets the the whole point in doing no-till uh, and the whole point in doing depths. It's just a bag run, bro. What the hell are you doing? It's a bag run. Um, King's Mix is the shit. Uh, my home greenhouse is going to be Tuper this run, though. Haven't gone no-till because it's temporary. Yeah, if it's temporary, then find another way to do it. If it's temporary, find another way to do it uh big boom is another strain that i'm looking forward to and i didn't get to run the big boom last time because it got caught in the fire and killed but whatever pop more seeds got that back um big boom uh there's another one that uh, uh i think it's get shorty um and watermelon mints those are some of the other ones that i'm looking forward to yeah shorty air i just I don't like telling y'all about shorty air because y'all can't get it yet. So I don't want to be that guy to keep on teasing y'all when I'm about to run a whole bunch of shorty air in this first round of the greenhouse that's coming up. So you guys, Beast Coast Grow 420, so you can watch that shorty air run. I ain't going to do that to y'all. <laughs> I don't like doing that to y'all. Don't worry. The S1s, will, he'll probably do another drop of those S1s for y'all. Oreos, apples, and bananas, capital runs. Okay. What y'all smoking on tonight? But yeah, if I had a beginner... I would definitely tell him one gallon pots of cocoa, go ahead and set you up a nice and easy watering system, uh, put it on for one minute a day, open flow, and you will have absolutely no problems. Absolutely no problems. You will be good. Uh, Jack's nutrients. What would you do to bring back to life your natural soil? It depends on what my natural soil is. It depends on where I live. So if I'm in California and it's sandy, I'm going to have to go about it a bit different than if I'm somewhere else and it's more clay. So um, it's all the same way in the long run to repair the soil, but it really depends on what kind of soil type that you have. Because everybody's just going to be a little bit different, which is going to have to make you do something a little bit different to get it back. Yeah, Jack, simple, cheap, boom. Get you two years worth of Jack's nutrients for nothing, man. Go ahead and order a bulk load of that shit and you will be fine. Smoking OG like an OG. Uh, blueberry times triple OG. Baklava. Wedding cake. Um, Elon Musk number two. Oh, oh, man, I need to smoke me some of that. Has some rich thoughts. Has some, has some good old rich, rich thoughts smoking that. Smoking slaps. Never heard of that one. White Zerbert. Never heard of that one. Smoking Gary Payton times apple fritter. Whoo. Pressure Gary Cross. Waffle cone. Cocoa with the rooted leaf nutrients is an unbelievable combo. Never heard of that one. I never heard of that one yet. Rooted leaf. Uh, tell us more about it. Uh, what additives do you do? Do you add plus jacks? I add no additives plus jacks. I use jacks three, two, one, done. Um, 
You ever grew any of Masonic's gear? I have not grown any of Masonic's gear yet. I have not. When you got friends like Frosty, man, it's, it's fucking hard to run other people's shit. He stay coming up with some new shit, and I want to hunt through those. <laughs> uh, slaps his runs cross with Grease Monkey. Okay. Smoking Big Mac from Copycat. Uh, original Diesel times TK. That's probably some gas. Smoking some Dosey Dose times Gelato 33. Okay. Uh, Death Bubba. You're in Canada. Um, Durban Poison. Very strong lavender terpenes. You know what's crazy? I like the Durban Poison taste in a Girl Scout cookie, but I don't like Durban Poison. Ethos Pluto. Uh, yeah, just straight three, two, one. Uh, you, you guys, listen. All of these things that you guys are adding are just completely unnecessary. If you want... The usual thing that they're using to be able to boost up the flowers is called tricantinol. You could find tricantinol in alfalfa extract. So if you guys could get your hands on some alfalfa extract, that's your tricantinol. That's your bud booster. That's all you need right there. If you decide that you want to add something, there is not a need to add something. But if you feel the need to add something, find you some alfalfa extract. Get that into your plants week four, five, six of bloom when it's at its peak of really swelling up. And there you go. Call it a day. But all of these other additives, I got nine, 10, 11 different things that you're using besides the base nutrient. No. No, no, hell no. Hell no. Y'all trying to take the fun out of growing by having to mix 90 different things just to be able to water the plants. Hell no. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how I think of Jack. Three, two, one, go. Molasses, if anything, you don't even need molasses. If you guys are in synthetics, you don't, you ain't, what, what microbes are you feeding to give back the plant anything? You, you're not worried about that. You don't have to feed no type of sweeteners at the end. That's for people who are in organics trying to boost the microbial life that's inside of their soil at the end so they could transfer some sweetness up. But you don't have to do that in synthetics. You don't have to do that in synthetics. What is F1 Derb made of? I completely forgot. I looked it up before. I looked it up before. I completely forgot. Um, Yeah, keep it simple, man. Keep it simple. You guys are trying to make everything so difficult. You take all of the fun out of growing. Beast, do you add labs to fruit ferments like pumpkin? Y yes, sometimes. Sometimes. <clears throat> yes, sometimes I do. My next run is going to be all OG crosses. Smart man, <laughs> in my opinion. F1 Derb is the original Durban Poison. That's what I was thinking. The name is Durban Poison. I, I think that's the actual name of it. I don't know if it's a cross or anything. And soil, yes. So in soil, you can add some kind of sweetener at the end. That'll help. But before I buy molasses, I may as well just make some ferments. Why not? If you're going to be feeding it something anyway, you, you may as well make some ferments and be able to give it to that at the end. That'll help it. OG is the new nickname for mids. Oh, man. Yo, I've heard this so many times that people say they don't smoke OG because it's trash. And I'm like, what OG did you guys get? Like, what were they giving you guys and calling it OG that you guys think is going to be OG? Couldn't be the OG I was talking about. Couldn't be the OG I smoke. Any updates on your living soil? I keep forgetting to upload the damn video. Yes. Yes, the beds are doing great. The beds are in flower now. They in like day two of flower. Those beds got so big and I chopped those beds back so many times. <laughs> I needed clones, man. I needed clones. So what I kept doing is letting them overgrow and then turning around and cutting them back. That's what I <laughs> just to be able to get the clones off of them. I wasn't even going to flower them after a while because they got so goddamn big that I'm like, man, I'm about to just clone all of these, rip about the ground and start over in these beds. But I'm like, you know what? Just let them go. So they in like day two of flower. Uh, I'll upload that video tonight, actually. Completely forgot about that. Yeah, they throw OG on everything, just everything. And now people say they don't like OG. Y'all must have never smoked no jet fuel. Y'all must have never smoked a Billy Kember. Y'all must have never smoked no fatso. Y'all must have never smoked no face off. Y'all must have never smoked no real OGs. No diamond OG. Y'all must have never smoked it. 
And I ain't saying there's a problem with Gelato 33. I think Gelato run the world. I think Gelato run the world. I think Gelato is just like uh, Coco. Gelato is just like Coco. If you had to recommend a strain to almost anybody, whether you a lightweight smoker or a heavyweight smoker, you could recommend Gelato and it will be perfect for them. Daytime, nighttime, Gelato. It's just an all-around winner. SFV, I fucking love SFV. Fire OG, Wi-Fi OG, yes. Yes, fire, all of them. I didn't like the marathon. Am I the only person who tried the marathon OG and was a little disappointed in it? I thought the Marathon OG was going to be some some super potent, gassy gas. The Marathon OG wasn't wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, Skittles is the new gelato? Uh, probably. Uh, Ghost OG is fire. Ghost OG, OG 18, fire. Oh, my God. Yes. Damn, dank. I completely forgot about that one. OG 18, fire. OG 18 is damn. I haven't had that one in years, man. OG 18 is fire. I need to find that. Which one of y'all got that? Um, I got the wrong one. I'm tripping. I got the I got the wrong marathon. Marathon fire. Oh, they must have gave me the booth, man. They must have gave me the booth, man. Cause the one I had was not good. They done gave me the booth. Oh hell no. They done hit me with the knockoff. They done hit me with Wi-Fi, my favorite. Wi-Fi is fire. Wi-Fi is fire. Fire OG is another good one. Yeah. <laughs> they, damn, they done, they done hit me with the flim flam. They done hit me with the flim flam. Probably with some platinum, man. They done hit me with the platinum. Told me it was the marathon. Khalifa Kush? I've had good ones and bad ones. Who in the chat ever smoked that super booth? I haven't had it yet. Rue Boy is fire. Rue Boy is fire. What are most of y'all growing in? What is the medium that most of y'all growing in? Drop the drop if you a soil grower, if you a cocoa grower, if you a hydro grower. Let's see what the average people are growing in. Marathon is Oakster Dam. Skywalk. Skywalker is a good one. You know what's crazy? Skywalker to this day is still very popular. To this day, Skywalker is very popular. I don't smoke any strain that got a fruit in the beginning of its name. So, no, I've never smoked banana uh, OG. As soon as you put a fruit in the beginning of the name, I'm not smoking it. Uh, soil, rock wool, soil, rock wool, cocoa, DWC, water, soil, cocoa, soil, 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 cocoa, living soil, uh, cocoa, 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 soil. Man, most of you guys are in living soil. That's what's up. Promix HP added perlite. Yeah, they hit me with a platinum. Soil, rock wool, royal gold, tuper. I don't, what is tuper? Um, yeah, mainly everybody is living soil or cocoa. A lot of living soil growers, man. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Depending on what, um... Depending on how long you guys have had those beds, I know growing has gotten so easy. You could just pop a plant in now and boom, you're good to go. Fox Farm. I haven't heard of nobody growing in that in a while. Organic made living soil. That's what I'm talking about. This is also true. Uh, no one's growing OG because it's not easy to grow. Don't fall for the hype. These other top shelf OGs out there got to get in tune yes i agree oh i'm gonna tell you something else about ogs uh they don't have the look that people are looking for today that's the main issue with og jet fuel is one of the few that was able to make it through because the bag appeal is there but most ogs are really red they're really green they don't have a lot of color the venom og is one of the only ones i know that throw a little bit of purple at the end of at, at the end of the cycle um so OG isn't the prettiest compared to what we have today. So I understand why a lot of people where aesthetics matter don't exactly want to grow no OG. I understand it 
it's the reason that I won't grow it as much as I love it, as much as I love it. And I think it's fire. I'm not just going to sit here and keep trying to force people to try something and tell them that it's fire. If that's not what they're looking for, they're looking for color. They're looking for uh, terpenes. They're looking for flavor. They're looking for other things. I'm just looking to get smacked and taste some gas. And I can't bring my selfish wants onto the, onto the people like that. So I, I know how it is. Larry OG trash though. Oh my God. I'm sorry. That Larry OG garbage. I did not like the Larry. That shit was garbage. Hell no. Hell no. Did not like the Larry. Soil yields more than cocoa. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. The reason I'm going to say I don't know about this because in the amount of time it'll take me to get a soil plant to harvest is completely different than the amount of time it's going to take me to get cocoa plants to harvest and to hit those numbers. I will say that. I don't believe that soil yields more than cocoa only due to timing. I have to veg my soil plants longer than I'm going to have to veg my cocoa plants. So in the long run, even if it yields more in a round, but I get to shave three weeks off of each harvest, which winds up giving me back a couple of months of a harvest throughout a year, I'm going to go with the cocoa every single time. I'm going to go with the cocoa every single time. Indoor, cocoa. Indoor, I'm going to just go with cocoa. See, but th there's always things on paperwork that uh, that sound great when you see it on paper. But take it from somebody who right now has a no-till room and also has a cocoa room. I'm going to tell you off rip that there is a massive difference in growth. There is a massive difference in growth between plants and cocoa and plants that are in living soil massive difference in growth i'm not yeah it's big it's it's very noticeable yeah i've been doing it for years and i got two rooms right now where one is soil and one is cocoa both healthy both doing good uh very different outcome and growth in the same amount of time three weeks vegged in cocoa is very different than three weeks vegged in soil i promise you i prom if cocoa if soil yielded more Soil is actually a little bit cheaper to get and a little bit easier to get your hands on. Do you think that the rest of these facilities would not be running soil? You think they wouldn't have loaded no-till beds into their facilities and been booming and not having to replace nothing? But there's a reason that you can't do it like that. There's a reason. Just the fact that you have to veg in the same room that you flower in if you're using beds is already a disadvantage. It's already a disadvantage. Cocoa is for lazy growers. It is. It is. Cocoa is for the people who really, they just want to grow some fire, get it out the way. And I'm saying for those who really love nature, for those who like to be in touch with nature, for those who really care about organics, for uh, for the people who fell in love with outdoor first, usually they're going to want to go with uh, with soil. And here's my honest opinion. I think plants grown in no-till soil taste 100 times better than plants grown in cocoa. I'm going to just throw it out there. I always find that the plants grown in no-till soil taste 100 times better than plants grown in cocoa. I can't explain it. I don't know why it is. But in fairness, this is my first time doing no-till indoor. This is my first time doing no-till indoor, just to be fair. So I don't know if it was the fact that the plants were outdoor. Is that the reason that I liked them so much? Or if it was just the soil? Because I also did seven gallon pots of cocoa outdoor and it was still a massive difference in taste and the plants were right next to each other i had three pots no-till three pots cocoa uh fed organic nutrients uh mended with worm castings and all of that and the ones that were in the living soil tasted a hundred times better than the other ones flush versus no flush uh am i flushing my no-till beds hell no hell no because there's always something still living. Why would I try to kill everything in the bed? Why, I, I can't afford to get rid of all of the nutrients and living soil. You can never, I, you never want to do that. You never want to flush it. Uh, the desert is the, re, the desert is the result of flushing soil. I'm going to repeat that. The desert is the result 
of flushing soil. That's what happens when soil starts to erode and all the nutrients starts to flow away. You get left with things that are just bare and empty and doesn't have any life to it, doesn't have any anything, and it turns into a desert. So sometimes you'll look at people's soil and the very top will be a very hard pan of crust. Uh, that's what happens when you start flushing soil. You do You never want to do that. You never want to do that. First off, if you're doing no-till, you're not feeding anything anyway. If you're doing no-till, you're not feeding anything anyway. And anything that you are feeding, there's so many other plants that's uptaking it that you it doesn't matter. No. So no, I never I never flush in soil. I just go the same way. Man, shout out to you for that rocket fuel, man. That rocket fuel. Got those things in the water already. What's good with your Q? Living soil does taste better. I agree. I've been using my soil for five plus years. I know that the shit coming out of that soil is straight fire. I agree with this 100%. 100%. And this could explain why I feel like uh, soil tastes a little bit better than cocoa does. Um, or I could just like outdoor more than I like indoor because I've never really smoked anything that was no-till indoor. Never did it myself. This is my first run uh, with the no-till on the indoor. So this will this will change a lot for me. I'll be able to really see if it was the outdoor that I liked the most or if it was the soil. What up with you, Django? If you're enjoying the show, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You already know. Yeah, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. Organic or synthetic, still the same compound. So why not flush? <clears throat> one salt based, uh, one isn't. So in one in the synthetic, I'm adding, I'm adding massive amounts of salt. Like massive, massive, massive amounts of salt. Um, so it may be smart to get some of that back out of there. Um, and most synthetic systems, the only thing that is living that can uptake that nutrient is that one plant and other systems, they have other plants that can filter out some of that nutrient. So it's not as much buildup because there's normally companion plant. And when you see, uh, living soil, no till, you normally get a cover crop and that's going to eat up some of the nutrients that's inside of that soil. So you don't exactly have to worry about that buildup. Now this one plant inside of this one gallon pot getting 1200 PPMs of nutrient every single day for eight weeks, I'm going to want to get some of that out of there because the only plant that's able to uptake this to dilute it any is this one plant that's inside of the pot so whether uh it's organic or synthetic i'm gonna want to get some of those heavy salts back out of there yeah that double butter was oh god that shit was fire i can't wait to pop some of those too can't wait to pop some of those peanut butter cookies is one of the most potent strains i've ever smoked and it's potent in a good way if you guys are looking for a really good nighttime smoke that peanut butter cookie is just it man it is. It is not a daytime smoke. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Well, I'm gonna show you the downfall of why this happens most of the time. Make sure that you guys drop a like. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you guys share this. Um, the reason that a lot of these people are failing for heavy metals is because they're loading their soil up with bat guanos and they're forgetting that these bats are going and eating things. So the buildup is stronger inside of the bat. And then when you get the bat feces after, it's now in a more concentrated form. And then you go and feed it to your plants afterwards. And now you're starting to get... Um, you're starting to get metal tests that you're not passing on. And it's mainly because of the guanos, the seabird guano, the bat guano, all of the guanos that people are using are usually loaded with heavy metal. So you have to be very careful. But that's why I don't use guanos. You guys seen when I amended my beds, there was no guanos that I use. That's one of the main reasons, because the amount of heavy metals inside of bat guano can really cause you to have some issues really cause you to have some issues and it could cause you to fail testing in places where things are legal so you want to be careful if you're somewhere legal and you're using things like back wano not a good idea and i use living soil i'm hearing a lot about kelp, kelp meal having people let me tell you guys something about sea vegetables this is going to help you in in, in health too um Sea vegetables literally detox the place that it's around 
of heavy metals and uh, radiation and all sorts of stuff. So it holds it inside of it, preventing the ocean from failing on itself. It's like a fail safe for the ocean. So when people are using kelp, when people are using these things that have been, who knows where this kelp is growing from? This kelp could be, <laughs> this kelp could be growing in some very barbaric conditions where they're inside of waters that are loaded with heavy metals. Then you get it afterwards and now you're failing tests for heavy metals. That's one of the main reasons right there because most kelps and seaweeds and sea vegetables are detoxing the ocean of the heavy metals getting put into the ocean and it holds on to it to prevent spikes from pH and stuff inside of the ocean. So when you guys are using this, be very careful. So because yes, some kelps can what you want to do is you want to go get the wild crafted kelp that you can eat. Go to Amazon, get the wild crafted, not organic. Not organic, because they count things as organic that could still cause you to fail. Wild crafted. You want to go and get the ones caught in the wild and use that. The one that they uh, food grade, the one that you can eat. Those are the ones that usually test very low in heavy metals because they usually come from waters that aren't that high in heavy metals. So find a food grade kelp or something and use that instead. Just, just my opinion. Yeah, kelp could definitely tear that garden up if used too much. Beast, what's your... What's your best companion plants and live in soil beds? Stinging nettle and comfrey is what I have so far. I love stinging nettle. I love comfrey. Feel free to companion plant what whatever it is that you're going to use the most. Be a little selfish when it comes to this. That's what I love so much about growing no-till. Why not companion plant some food? Why not companion plant with a herb that you're going to be using medicinally? Why not companion plant with some thyme? Why not companion plant with some mint and be able to make you fresh teas every morning, be able to get you some, something to get the blood flowing, some rosemary, something like that. So the best companion plants to me is the ones that you're going to be using the most. If you're going to use them for medicine, if you're going to use them for teas, if you're going to use them for IPM, companion plant for IPM as well because the certain scents literally prevent bugs from ever wanting to come around it so companion plant with things that you are gonna use whether it's greens whether it's anything you seen a video I got on Instagram of me harvesting the greens I was out of the no-till beds right out of the no-till beds and yes I still eat it and it tastes amazing so companion plant with things that you're gonna use a lot be selfish a little bit you got the living soil right there. Why not add something that you're going to be using all the time? What's your favorite seasoning that you like to use when you cook? How about adding that as a companion plant and see if you can cut back on the cost of having to buy that all the time and have it in fresh form? If you're somebody who's a chef and really like to cook, load it up with herbs. Have the time of your life. Have the time of your life. I bought my last bottle of Advanced Nutrients Jungle Juice old school, but I will not pay for water ever again. Shout out to you for making this switch. I ain't know anybody was still using advanced nutrients, man. They got a big ass line. I remember one of my first times going to the hydro store. I remember one of my first times going to the hydro store and seeing that long ass line of advanced nutrients. It was like the whole middle aisle, both sides of me on both shelves. It was just nothing but fucking advanced nutrients, rhino and tarantula and piranha. And I'm like, good Lord. And the, and the new grower inside of me said, Nigga, buy it all. <laughs> like, yeah, devil sitting right on my shoulder, like, nigga, buy the whole line, B. <laughs> you a boss, buy the whole line. You want advanced nutrients to work, nigga? You gotta buy the whole line. Bud candy is one of those sweeteners that'll cause you to fail testing because of the heavy metals found inside of it. So be very careful with that if you're in legal states and depending on what you put in there. Shout out to everybody that's in here. Make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Which is better, Athena or Canna? I never used Athena, but I'll tell you if you guys want a simple nutrient that is super clean, works every time. I've never burnt a plant with it. Canna A, Canna B. That's all you need. You don't need the Rhizo. You don't need the Boost. You don't need none of that shit. Canna A, Canna B, done. Done. Oh, don't worry. I think Frosty, I think Frosty gonna be in later. Don't worry. We 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 got this. We gonna have the show for y'all, that's for sure. That shit was high as fuck. Then Fox Farm came out. Yeah, yeah. Fox Farm, Fox Farm is just that tried and true. From the beginning of time until now, people have got away with not only Fox Farm soil, but Fox Farm nutrients and have had absolutely no problems. The only thing I don't like is they don't warn you to wait. So even if you're a happy frog, you don't want to transplant into happy frog and just start feeding right away. You want to give 
water to the plant, let it recycle the nutrients that's inside of the happy frog. And then as soon as you see that it's running out of nutrients, maybe a bottom leaf starts to change colors or something, that's when you begin feeding. So many people tried fox farm, burnt their plants, assumed that they didn't know how to grow because the instructions weren't clear enough. You got to let it run its course, even though it's happy frog, even though they say it's a very low level of nutrients, it matters. It definitely matters. And it plays a part when you guys are going to be feeding the nutrients in right on top of it. $40 bag of Happy Frog, $27 bag of Floor Flex. Oh, that's a nice little method you got right there. Rooted leaf products are all ferment, humic, carbon based nutrients. That's what's up. I'm hearing about this Epsom salt. Is that the move for a booster? For a bloom booster, Epsom salt? Well, uh, yeah, I guess. But Epsom salt is mainly for magnesium. That's that's to get CalMag out of the way. Because, you know, they tell you to CalMag every goddamn thing. Every time you turn around, you got a problem, CalMag. Your, uh, the bottom of your pot broke, uh, CalMag. Your, uh, your tray is slightly tilted, CalMag. <laughs> you got spider mites, spray them with CalMag. You got russet mites, spray them with CalMag. Hops late and viroid, dip it in CalMag. We could get rid of that idea. What do you think about Canna Terra or Jax 321? I choose Jax over Canna because Canna's water. You want sugars for bloom boosters. <laughs> CalMag everything. I'm telling you, every time we turn around, this CalMag. LED's not working. Spray it with CalMag. Spray it with CalMag. Boom, bloom booster, CalMag. Plants crippled and looking crazy, cow mag. Purple stems, cow mag. I use Epsom salt every feeding. Every feeding with Epsom salt. Especially under LEDs, you, you can't fuck around. And especially in cold temps. If your temperatures are a little bit colder, you damn sure don't want to fuck around. Can is cleaner. I love, I love can of nutrients. If I had to use a bottled nutrients that was like a liquid, it, it'd be can of. It'd be can of all day. All day. Hold on, y'all. Oh, shit. I think I was supposed... Damn it. Y'all hold on one second. Hold up. Give me one second. I got a surprise for y'all. Hold on one second. Yeah. I tried to reach out to some of the homies and name reached back, so now I'm like, fuck it. Now I done came up, I'm on a whole nother level, don't turn it to something it wasn't. I want it all, so I ain't leaving no paper, some people gonna call me a glutton. I rock it all, middle finger to the haters, now back to this beat cause I'm bustin'. Yeah, back in the streets I was running it all and living my life like I love it. I want the money, and ain't a thing in my life that I'm willing to put right above it. Rainy or sunny, if I'ma leave out the house and that 40 on me, I'ma tuck it. I've been too hungry, ain't about to take nothing from me, paranoid so I'm clutching. yeah. Yeah. You gotta watch the people you got around you. As soon as you walk so away, they got you. They got up and mad at my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm spinning, huh? While y'all was wishing me bad luck, had to back up, see the vision, huh? Others was showing me mad love, time to act up, we was with it, huh? Now they just mad at my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm winning, huh? Wasn't a trap, had to bag up, get my stack up, see a milli, huh? Go to the link, get my packs up, fill a back up, then I'm dishing, huh? Couldn't be with all the actors, not a factor to be winning, huh? Yeah. They got up and mad at my bag up, got my tag up, so I'm spinning, yeah. I'm working yeah. on getting my bag up, trying to stack up. See a milli, huh? Loving the beam and the back up. I want seven sixes like I'm Philly, huh? Pink pink the bundle with the black guts. Trying to act up as I mash up through the city. I got my stacks up, so it's Liddy. Anyone act up, get a fit. I, I, I just be racked up, see me drippy. Moving the pack, sending out the city. Don't trust the soul, I gotta keep it with me. I hate this bitch out of shit, it's getting iffy. But now I got back up, kind of stack up as I'm thinking, smoking on the piffy. Wifey 100, gotta keep it with me. Cause I know some bitches just out here to get me. It's a long road, the road to riches. Stories get old, they're cold and vicious. Gotta be bold. 
code to vision. Got up is all that they know, remember. Living this life to get cold December. Had to reship and remold my temper. Now I be stepping in all my splendor. You take a shot, then I'm gonna rest. Got up and mad my bag up. Got my tag up, so I'm spinning, huh? Why y'all was wishing me bad luck? Had to back up, see the vision, huh? Others was showing me mad love. Time to act up, we was with it, huh? Now they just mad at my bag up. Got my tag up, so I'm winning, huh? Wasn't a trap, had to bag up. Get my stack up, see a million, huh? Go yeah. I see a cock. Yeah. I see them clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base See them clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base. Ain't one fuck with me when I was down at the bottom So don't come around and be asking no favors Not trying to link and I don't wanna tap it So don't have no hopes of you seeing me later Laughing my way as I go to the bank With a Gucci bag full just to drop off this paper Cruising with all the movers and shakers You know if I'm about to do it, it's major Just got the navy blue clock with the laser Hop in my Bentley and block out the haters Music be coming off top, ain't no paper Smoking some gas, it look just like the Lakers I do like Betty and just get my kick up Trying to do 200k on the wake up Work every day and I won't take no pay cut You can keep clocking, I swear it don't phase it I'm clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base See I'm clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visual, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the basics Don't worry, it's coming soon Be on iTunes, I'll be on everything I'm definitely gonna get on Cuban 50 Phil Street Yeah <laughs> Yeah, if you make it, I'll break it. Yeah, Rebels. Don't worry, guys. I think we got something special coming up. Running, I, I was running a little late. I read a message wrong. But let's keep going. Um, where was we? <laughs> yeah, you definitely save more money organically amending. So, man, if, if most of you guys are just home growers and hobbyists, then uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold up. Hold up. Wait. We got Tiki in the building. What's good, man? Hey, what's happening? Man, good to have you on. So hold up. Before we even get started, we got Tiki Madman in the building. Sorry for the late link. Yeah. <laughs> that, ca that California time always throws me off. Uh, it's no worries. I'm a late nighter, so it's good. Oh, good. So, how's everything? Busy. <laughs> Busy. Uh, so, what's been going on? Not much. Uh, Asked Kim on board tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that we're doing coming up. We've got uh, the Groovy Gravy show, the Secret Stash um, in Denver Ooh. coming up. It's going to be a big show. Uh, a lot of big names going to be there. Really excited for it. Seeing, like, Ooh. you know, for once, big genetic show coming, just not like a. Uh, like a swap, you know, like an actual show. Yeah. At a premier venue downtown Denver. Really excited and to uh, promote uh, this event. The promoter who's doing it, he used to do the uh, big show out there, um, the Indo Expo. Uh, is Wolf, okay. Is his name. Um, his new production company is called uh, It's Groovy. It's Groovy Baby or It's Groovy Gravy. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's it's pretty dope. I'm pretty excited to uh, go out to Denver and see how all See a bunch of cats out there and uh, be able to uh, talk to everybody. We've got a ton of uh, exclusive gear I've never even dropped before we're taking. And they can um, only get it and they can only get it if they show up there. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. So it's, it's yeah, exactly. It's gonna be fun. And um, on top of that, I'm selling it for 50% off. Oh, 
Man, you guys are hearing it here. So if you're gonna be there, make sure yeah. that you hit up the Tiki booth. You, you guys are gonna have your own booth there, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you guys make sure that you get over there and visit the booth. I mean, people go to the shows for deals, right? They're not gonna fly out there or make the trip just to be able to buy something retail, you know, that they can get off the internet sitting on their couch, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. I get that. A lot of guys don't get that, but I get that. It's like if you're gonna make the trip out there, I'm gonna make it worth your time, hundred percent. When you when you go to these events, have you ever seen places where they're offering the same stuff that's available on the site? Like nothing's different. Like the people are that are coming there probably already have the stuff that they have on their table. Yeah, it's like the majority of these guys. It blows my mind. Like they show up, they're selling packs for retail. It's the same shit you can get off the internet. It's like. They wonder why they don't do any sales. Like, man, I could sit at home on my couch in my underwear and do the same thing. Like, <laughs> Actually, I was already doing home? this. Yeah, I was already doing this from the yeah. comfort of my home. I didn't have to come out here for this. Exactly. So I want to always give people opportunity to talk to me, talk to talk to you know my crew, get walk away with something that's could be like the best fan of the year for them. You know, uh, I, I really I really dig that aspect of the shows. I love meeting other growers, talking to them. This show's gonna be a little different. What the way he does things is like uh, when you buy your tickets, you get like a time slot, so you get X amount of time to like run through the show, get your stuff, and then get out. So it's not overcrowded. You're not waiting in lines. You know what I'm saying? Like boom, you're in. Boom, you're out. You know, you get X amount of time to hit the tables, talk to the breeders real quick, and uh, you know afterwards we're right downtown. So odds are afterwards we're gonna be at one of the local uh, bars or restaurants hanging out you know with everybody and everybody's invited of course and oh so they'll even get the after party with you oh hell yeah hell yeah you, you know what i like the way they did that with the time slots though because one of the biggest yeah. complaints you normally hear is is the line going all the way back for certain breeders and you can't get access yeah. to it afterwards so yeah. Uh, yeah. can you buy like a higher time slot to be able to be like one of the first people in or is it just first come first serve Honestly, I'm not sure how he did that. Um, okay. I should have I should have had that information at, in hand, but I don't. Um, I'm not sure. It says tickets from like 20 or to 70. There is a price range on the tickets. That so may I'm be what it's for. Yeah, I think he's well. He's also doing a big glass show after the the genetics are doing a really cool glass show too. So that might include that. So I'm not sure how it all breaks down. If you got any questions, like I say, super nice guy. Uh, you can check him out on IG. Send him a DM. He'll get back to you 100. percent Okay. Uh, what what do you like to smoke out of? Me personally, yeah, I like the old uh, I like the old wraps. You know, say the old uh, blunt wraps. Okay, <laughs> you know, like still, still big, keep it easy. Yes, I like the you know the white grape owls. I still like those. It's old okay. school. Okay, but uh, now, you know what? You Most know. people are still smoking out of the same thing. Still yeah, I mean, I like those. I still like a good zigzag orange. You know, um, some of these new papers that came out. Uh, they, they mess with the taste too much. I don't like it. You know, That's I still got a killer. Thing. Yeah, I still got a killer old ice bong that I like to break out on occasion, especially in the summer. You know, that I nice can't handle bongs going. to save my life. <laughs> it's once in a while. I'm getting a little older now, so yeah, but, I tried and it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Somebody got a question um, for somebody who wants to try your gear for the very first time. What is just like a a general great strain that they could go with, nice and easy to grow, decent yielder, flavors, looks, everything. Um, I mean, we do have certain clones on the clone site right now. Oh shit. Um, seed wise, some of the more exotics, like I've noticed a lot of the cookie stuff. They're 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 geared more for like uh, really heavy P, uh, um, PPM feeds. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like in that commercial where they're on like a 380C. Um, you know, so some like you know, some of our R and D rooms, they don't perform the best, but the minute we put them in those on the tables, they they kill. So they boom, yeah, yeah. I've noticed that a lot about like a lot of the cookie stuff, like the cake mixes or the apples and bananas, things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of I my heard stuff, the apples and bananas is a super heavy feeder. Yeah, she, yeah, she can take it. Yeah, she can take. Yeah, absolutely, she can take it. So I run, I run both. You know, when we do our R and D rooms, it's a lower PPM. We let the plant grow naturally, so we can see what the plant's doing and how fussy she is. And, um, you know, we're doing our pheno hunts. But then afterwards, we, you know, our keepers will run through the high EC rooms to see how they're performing in a commercial setting to try to um, make sure everybody's covered, you know. Okay. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, but it's so funny. So when, bre when breeding, yeah. is that something that you really keep in mind? Like, uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, this, this is going to be one of those higher feeders, right? Yeah. Here. Well, I mean, yeah, especially when commercial guys contact us where they're looking for uh, new genetics, you know, so. 
I like to be able to, if I can, if I have the information, the data points, I like to be able to share that with people so they know what they're getting into before they get it. So That's then, dope. you know, it's stress testing also, right? I want to run them in multiple environments to make sure they're not going to harm, make sure that they're stable, make sure that they're going to produce yield, color, terps, everything. So, you know, we're, we're looking for the most stable, the most best genetics we get our hands on. So, I mean, it, it never stops. Okay, now I want to see how you answer this question. What's your best 56 day strength? <laughs> um, so 56 day, that's that's when it's finished, right? From the time you flip from 12 12. So it's a double bladed sword there a little bit. When guys ask me how long they run, because different rooms actually run at different times, like how you're feeding them, the light spectrum, everything. Because we run a lot of far red in our LEDs. So we usually shave a week off of our times. And um, okay. a lot of growers don't know, but the Dutch did a lot of um, R&D on this in the 90s. About far oh, yes. It, it, it works. You could actually watch your monitors. You could watch the plants gas off that first 15, 20 minutes. It's wild. So, Ooh. yeah, definitely shave some time off. So then you got the other side of the sword where what's finished? What's your opinion? Some guys tell me it's... <laughs> Some guys tell me it's 60% amber, which is absurd to me, but that's what they say. That's that's their gig, you know? So that's kind of a loaded question, guys. Like, do you run Do you run any strength for 56 days? I mean, we typically run everything eight to nine weeks just to see how it does. Now, when we're pheno hunting, obviously some things finish earlier than others, just clearly mm -hmm. looking at them. I mean, it's like, yeah, duh, that thing's done, you know? So but we still just run it out because sometimes if you stress that plant, it might herm. So we want to see that also. We want to so, see what that pushes. Yeah, exactly. It might boom color. More turfs might come in. You just don't know. So, um, yeah, we, we kind of have that standard eight, nine week finish time on everything, no matter what. It could yeah, be. Yeah, I'm usually 60, 63. Yeah. So guys will be like, oh, it finished in 54. It's like, yeah, I could see that if that's what your opinion. If you, you know, if you're only looking for two bits of amber on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which a lot of guys go by that. They they count one two ambers per scope, then boom, they say it's done. How so, do you how do you determine when is a good time to harvest? Do you do you check trichomes or is it just we <laughs> used to and, and then over time, you know, over a decade of growing, you kind of just look at a plant, she stopped drinking, she has that look, you know, she's done, you know. So Yes, just making growing a little bit easier on yourself. You've seen yeah. it's done a thousand times. You you know when a strain is done and when it's not. Yeah, I mean, a big telltale is when they stop drinking. You know, they're done. Yes. Like, yes. They're like, nope, no more. I'm done. If they, if they <laughs> every day clockwork on that feeding and then you go in one yeah. day and those and pots nothing. still look. Yeah, the top's still wet. Nothing. Yes. You're like, okay, she's done. <laughs> whether, you, yeah, whether you like it or not, she's done. <laughs> so. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really like the amber thing because that kind of depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for a more racy smoke? Or are you looking for a more sedative smoke? Can a strain take being ran a little bit longer, like you said, without Hermian or throwing a couple of nanners? Like, it, yeah, is this something you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. And some guys like the amber flavor, some guys don't. I mean, technically, amber is the degradation of the THC, right? I mean, there's no THC coming off amber at all. No. Um, that's why, like a lot of your hash guys, take that take about six weeks. You know what I'm saying? They take them early because they want yes. all they want all cloud and and clear amber, uh, no amber at all, just clear and cloudy. So, yes. but then again, you had some guys say other. I mean, it's like I said, that question is loaded because a lot of it's your opinion, the way you like to grow, what you like your final, final product to taste and smell like. Some guys say nine weeks, no matter what, because it adds weight every time. So I've heard that too. So. That's me. That's me. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. Yeah. Nine weeks. I, I don't care yeah. if they're, I don't care You're if they're probably 100% eight. on to be honest. Cause every time <laughs> we run it nine weeks, we really get the full flavor profile. We see everything, you know what I'm saying? They might be a little more degraded than we'd like, but we do see everything. So I had a strain that didn't really start to put out the real bulk of its weight till week eight and nine. That's like the Detroit runs. She like seven. That's when the color comes in. That's when the bolt comes in. That's when the Terps, turn it up which is odd because both are heavy indicas you know the lineage but you know they just, they plants, just wait yeah, the the plants they, putting that weight on they do at the end of the day so yeah what's one of the uh what's one of the newest crosses you've been working on that you super excited about oh man uh let me sit hold on one second let me get a picture hold on yep man y'all better go ahead and drop a like and subscribe while y'all here man there ain't nobody else bringing y'all stuff like this can you see that uh, hold it to the side. Rainbow Rain? Yep. Rainbow Rain. So that's the RS-11 cross with the uh, Candy Rain? RS-11 is... It's uh, Rainbow Sherbert. 
Rainbow Sherbert. Dio and Wizard Farms, uh, the okay. Terps are out of this world. We think it's the next runs. That's that big. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, it's it's unreal. Sherbert so, was really Sherbert kind of went under the radar and was super fire. And like, I love you know, Sherbert. That's sweet me Sherbert too. Yes, dude. That's still one of my favorite turf profiles, hands down. Sherbert's we get fire. That heavy from the jealousy. You know, we get um it's just it, it's unreal. Like we did the um ice cream cake BX that's got that sweet sherbet in there. It's just it's amazing. So I absolutely I drool every time I smell <laughs> no, Sherbert's one of those ones, and I was I was kind of shocked that. It, it just went under the radar. Like, if you ask people about it, they loved it. But yeah. you didn't see me a lot of people growing it. You didn't see a lot of it on Instagram. It was. I, I think when it hit, it was so popular that a lot of guys tried to take advantage of the situation. And they sold, like, a purple punch or something in its shoes. So maybe it ne never really caught on because the guy's trying to, uh, you know, get a buck yes. off the hype, yes. you know, per se. Just so, putting the name of it on anything, and here you go. Yeah, so a lot of people didn't get a fair shake, get the real taste, get the real flavor of the sherbet. Because when you do, it's it's loud as fuck. Like, it, sherbet can't be faked. Like, it's sherbet, no. sherbet. Just no. like Skittles can't be faked, just like rugs can't be faked. Glue can't be faked. Like, you smell it, you know it, that's it, it's done. Yes. So. And once you've been around enough of these strains, you can even tell when someone's lying to you. They could be like, yo, this is this. And you'll smell it and be like, no, it's not. I know exactly. I, I can smell it. usually a lot of strains, and even in the lineages, like further yes. down their own line. So yes. that's like this is a cookie crop for sure. Yeah. I know I know there's a cookie some somewhere down the line. Yeah, you can smell like. punch in there, you can smell <laughs> some things in there because yep. a lot of uh, terps are very dominant. Let's say like the uh trap cookies, for example. If you use Ooh. that female in any breeding. Guess what? Ninety percent of that offspring is going to be a hundred percent trop. Oh man, so, that trop no smell is trop cookies. You know it, that it, trop it, can it, smell so heavy. Yeah, it exactly. is so and, heavy. And in breeding, it just takes over. That's why when I bred it, we only used the male because the male didn't dominate as hard as the female did. Anytime we used the female in breeding, it was like ninety percent trop cookies every time on all the offspring. So, okay. which is not a bad thing, you know. You know, you're going to find good strains in, in, in a pack of seeds, you know, you're going to find that, 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 that profile gem. and the look, you know, so it's a great, it's a great strain in that, in that content. I've always loved it. The actual cut we had was more grapefruit. It wasn't orangey at all. It was pure grapefruit with, which we Ooh. won a couple cups. Yeah. We won a few cups with uh, my cut. I'm sure the guys that run it out there, if anybody's in the audience will contest to that, 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 that grapefruit, I, which I love. I love the grapefruit terps. I always have. So I had grapefruit one time. And I remember smoking it and then taking a walk and winding up on the other side of my town. <laughs> like, I don't know how I got there. I don't know what I was doing walking <laughs> over there. It was super hot out. And I was it, it just inspired me to start walking and not stop. Like great, <laughs> great something about the grapefruit strain. Like, I, I don't know what that terp is, but if you want to get up and moving, you want to work out or something, smoke anything grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit. That was the first time like growing. I'm talking years and years ago. That was the first time I actually smelled something that didn't smell like weed for the first time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, what what?" Just, I like just blew my mind the first time. It smelled just like grapefruit rind, and like I got. And what's the strain you're talking about? That's just grapefruit. The original grapefruit from no, um, the one, the one that you made. Oh no, that was the um, that was our fino of the trop cookies. Okay, you got the grapefruit leaning. Yeah, fino. yeah. Which I'm. How many made. did you have to hunt to find that? Um. We popped a few packs. We usually pop two or three okay. when we're looking for something, you know. Okay. Then if we don't find what we're looking for, we pop another two or three packs. That's okay, two, we, three at a time. Yeah, because a lot of these guys are like, oh, I, I, I ran 100, 100 plants to find something. It's like, well, could you do that again? Like, the, you know, take cuts of everything, run everything again and on a blind test and pick the same exact <sighs> one because I highly doubt it. Highly so, doubt it. Yeah, I mean, if you got like a... So we pop, let's say, two packs. You get about 24, or excuse me, you get 24 plants roughly, and then, or, mm -hmm. you know, and and then that narrows down with the male female ratio. Let's just say 50 50. So you got a solid 12 plants to uh, hunt, you know, 10 to 12 plants. You can really see if they're bred well, you can see um, what's the dominant. Variations. You know, yeah. yeah, you can see your variation. You don't start picking out, like, okay, this is the squatty one. This one has this leaf formation. This one has this turp smell. And then that information will help us pick out the males that we want that we're looking for, right? Mm. That we can, yeah. So you can't, in my opinion, you can't hunt a male unless you hunt the female first. And then you can start, okay, this is what I'm looking for in the male. And you can start doing the stem rub. You can look at the structure. You can look at the plant, the male, and okay, say, okay, 
that male should have these traits, you know, of what we liked in this. And typically, you know, we'll, we'll only look for males in a pack where there's uh, an abundance of outstanding phenos out of one pack, like multiple keepers. Because that's what I want to breed for, right? I want to breed for success. So yes. I want somebody who buys a pack to find a keeper every single time in just one pack. You know, I don't want to be the guy like, oh, just you should probably buy six packs so you can find one <laughs> keeper. Like, you know, I can't garbage, no, dude. I cannot that's tell garbage. you, I cannot yeah. tell you how many breeders out here. They, they, yo, beast, how come you don't order from no seed banks or anything? I'm like, bro, because most of these breeders, you gotta pop so many packs. Just to find what I've been hunting every round for about six or seven years now. I've found five strains that were worth just keeping because exactly. all these other breeders, I'm popping whole packs and finding nothing that I want to keep. Literally nothing. Not one strain was worth even remotely keeping. Well, if hopefully if you pop my stuff, you find something in one pack. Oh, I got some <laughs> I got some of yours going right now. Awesome. I got some I got some of my Let me right know because that's that's what I bring, that's what I strive for. I mean it's not perfect, but I'm looking already yeah. at the health of them and I could tell yes, I'm gonna find something I like out of this. Oh, uh, what yeah. do you do with more miniature style plants. When you see something that's really short, really squat, do you just kill it off top and not waste time going forward with it? Or will you still flower it out? It, it, it depends on the lineage, you know, like our, my banana punch was a lot like that. She was just super squatty and mm -hmm. um, she still tested at 36%. You know, she smelled just like banana ice cream. You know, people lose their minds every time they ran it. It was a brilliant smoke. It was purple. So we use that in a lot of crosses because typically we find if we run something short and squatty, that's heavy indica with like um, more of a lanky um, hybrid. If we cross those two, typically we get like the perfect plant every time, like with something oh, right in the middle. Yeah, everything's like, boom, right there. Just like that's that's how the Tropicana banana came about. We took, you know, the trap cookies and then hit the banana uh, punch. You know, she was short and squatty, okay. you know, the trap cookies, lanky, boom, yep. got the perfect size plant. Massive yields. It's just, it was perfect. Mm, so, sits right in the middle. Yeah. And then we got banana and we got the orange chirps. Boom. Locked right in. So. Do you I think mean, that the real GDP is dead? No. We got it going right now. Oh, I'll beautiful. The BX. Yeah. No, Neptune's been killing me. He's like, I need those BX seeds. So we took the fizzle rocks, which is the, um, which is the GDP crossed with uh, Skittles. Mm -hmm. took that mail and then backed it into the original GDP. So there is. And the GDP is another one of those when, when they breed out, takes over like 80, 90 percent of the genetics, extremely dominant. So, also, it's super easy to find yeah, almost an identical yeah. of the. Yes. OK, yeah, we ran those fizzle rocks. I mean, I'd say 90 percent of the phenols were dead ringers for GDP, like same central heavy cola, purple, same terp, same gross, everything. It was just spot on. I look at it the same way as when you're dog breeding. No, no, no matter what. A genetic isn't gone. You can always find it again and in, in the lineage. It and you you can say I can't find that exact same one. When GDP came out, there was no exact same one. All of yeah. you guys had a different one. Cause I could tell you on the East Coast, the reason we don't like GDP is because I guarantee you it wasn't the one that the people on the West Coast were getting. Sure. It was probably a completely different one. So I don't believe that strains are just dead. They said the same thing about SFV OG. Oh, you'll never find the real SFV anymore. Well, I have it. So the now blue, what? Glue is the only one we couldn't re recapture, honestly. Uh, Gorilla glue? glue? Was, yeah, the glues that we ran were so... The original glue had, like, super soft, almost like African uh, like African violet. Like, super yes. soft sugar leaf, right? Yes. But we've run multiple since then. No, literally. Yeah. That is the best description I've heard yeah. so far, because I had that one. Yeah. And literally so you had the original. To, that was the real one. soft to the touch. Yeah, and we ran multiples trying to find something close to that. We never came close to that original mm. she was like that and she had that like kind of almost blue tinge to the to the to the central cola so never been able to, like there's plenty of that smell just like the gg4 100 percent. but the, that yeah. that actual original number four cut i think wow. i think that i think that one may have been lost i'm sure there's guys out there that are like i have it tiki i have it but we run all that we, we hunted that one around for three years of just no luck for some really good sources so yep. Yeah, that you know what? It's crazy that you say that because that was one of the most, and it was very greasy. That's another greasy as hell. Yeah, that, it was greasy. She, as she all loves it green. You top, you chop everything off her. We had about twenty inch plant, just single main cola, mm -hmm. you know, just lollipop the hell out, and she just produced a massive chunk. Massive, of, yes. Had that light, like that almost like blue hue to her with the with literally, the, yeah. And then those like really nice velvety 
African violet, you know, sugar leaf, and that was the real GG4. At least that's that the was the real one. So, and I'm talking about the the extracts you could make from that original oh, yeah. GG4. I'm use the They're whole special. plant. Yeah, there was yeah. no part of the plant that you could not use. There was frost yeah. on everything. With rails everywhere. Yep. Rails. Yep. Um, yep. what are some of your favorite OGs? If you if you even like them. No, nah, I, I you know we we stayed a lot away from a lot of the OGs. Honestly, okay. I'm more of a candy guy. I like my okay. terps. That you know with 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 uh tissue culture, mm -hmm. um, when we run into some of the old OGs that they've been running, um, they're just heavily infected with everything you know because they've been around for so long so mm, it's been a, um, i didn't even think about that yeah it's been you know, some are too far gone to even save in tc in my opinion you know i'm sure there's guys out there that'll say otherwise but but some of them just hurt yeah i mean i wish you know if you guys you guys out there if you guys got some of those old seeds sitting in the freezer you know pop them because i mean the ogs are ogs for a reason you know and pop them and see if we can't find some new genetics get things going again you know with that stuff i never Bought any of that stuff heavily. I always was chasing perps and terps. So okay, <laughs> yep. That's what I was just trying to see which side you lean more on. Yeah, Our it's probably just the East Coast. Yeah, these hell. So I mean, which one? The biscotti pancakes that runs a lot. I, my opinion, like a OG, like it's got that OG. Biscotti's an OG cross, isn't it? I believe so. I mean, there's been different statements out there on the biscotti. Oh, know. it's one of those. Yeah. They kind of just leave it, <laughs> leave it up to memory. Just <laughs> we're going to say it one time in one video yeah. and afterwards and you guys guess what it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of genetics end up like that. Uh, a lot of people That's don't really know what it is. So the yeah. industry fills well, in the lineages where they deem fit, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, can't no one convince me still with sour diesel is. You could tell me as much as you want to, but the strains that you're telling me that made sour diesel, I've had them by themselves, and I don't see how these two together made that. That original that sour it. diesel. You there? Sorry. Yeah, Somewhere still else. here. Um, Can you hear? You there, boss? Yep, still here. Hello? Yep, yep. Up there, yeah. Cool. Sorry, oh, I lost, okay. lost the sound for a second. Um, yeah. well, I'm sorry. You can repeat the question. No, no, oh. nothing. We'll move on to the next okay. one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what's the state? Um, what's the state of breeding for colors? Uh, you re-ask that question. You gotta ask that a different way. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. What is pink panties? That's a that's a one that, that came from Trebinsky. That was um oh so he created pink panties. Yeah, or he acquired it. Um, but that's yeah, he's known for that strain, you know. And, I just and, never knew what it was. I've I've heard it a million times. I've just I never believe known what it's, it was. I believe it's I believe it's an OG cross, uh OG okay. cross with some sort. I could talk to Mario next time I talk to him about it, find out for sure. She's okay. fire, she's delicious. You know, I think it's a pink, you know, kind of came from lineage of pink kush, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, but that's the only time I do. ever had pink Kush was from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Kushes. Anytime I heard Kush, I just assumed Canada for some reason. Yeah. They were like homes of the Kushes in the beginning of this. Yeah. I mean, a lot of your Kushes came from Canada. A lot of your Kush also came off the mountain in California mm -hmm. when they needed strains to run outdoors. They flew to Pakistan, Afghanistan, and they grabbed land rays from the Kush region. They came back to California, and that's where a lot of your cushions started from out in California. Your triangle cush, or you know, that was Florida, but you know, what I'm saying a lot of your cushions out in California came from those guys actually physically going and getting seed from that region. Man, you know, shout out to them. Were, yeah, like they they didn't want to mess with the sativas that were being ran and whatnot down in uh, Mexico, so they went out over there and grabbed what they thought would do good on the mountain out in California, and. And look what we got really? now. Yeah, <laughs> look what we got now. Um, jealousy. What's your what's your opinion on the jealousy? Jealousy's fire as hell. Um, I heard. Yeah, it's the forty one cross with the Sunset Sherbet BX. Um, you know, there's been some controversy with uh, whether it was a, a a cut of the cross or if it was the cross itself. When we grabbed the seat originally, um, the menus on the mince menus listed Jealousy as 41 Cross Sherbert. 
and then it listed other cuts as JBZ's cut. So we went with what the information we had at the time on the mince menus that they were selling at the Disbo. So, you know, after the fact, you know, he's going, you know, he started talking about, oh, that's just the cut. It's not the cross. Yeah, you know, it's just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick a name and go with it, guys. We're trying to give the breeder, you know, the, the, the credit, you know, yeah, yeah the but, credit. We're trying to do it to what he was released. It's not like he wants to talk to anybody, you know. He's on his own little fucking planet, so we're doing the best we can to name stuff correctly so people can trace the breeders and the lineages. So I just don't get what he means by it was the cross, but not the. Uh, what? Yeah, it's, he was saying it was his cut, you know, not the cross. So what, what's the name of the cross? Because like I said, we went off a of mince menu. That's how we got that name. Lit did the same thing, you know. We so you would just have out. to call it Gelato Forty One times Sherbert, Sherbert BX Forty One Sherbert or whatever. But but like Forty One Sherbert is yeah. Like jealousy. I said, we we saw it on a mince menu. You know, it's it was real clear what it was, and that's what we went with. So this was before I, it even got hyped. Before anybody knew what the hell it was. So also, this is before the also oh, this is before the boom on it. Yeah. So it, it got its name afterwards. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, so mince, you know, produces seed and flour for BZ. And, you know, one of the Disbos, mince had on their menu what jealousy was. And typically they would note if it was the name of the, the uh, pheno or the name of the strain. That one was noted as the strain. So that's what we went with. Okay. That's super confusing. But yeah, I heard <laughs> it I heard it great is. things about jealousy. It yeah, it, no, it's killer. It's unbelievable. This is the same mix up that happened with like wedding cake and jungle cake, isn't it? Jungle cake is the Wi Fi cross with the wedding cake. Okay, that was with Jungle Boys. Um, Jay was working with them early on, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Um, phenomenal. We won cups with the jungle cake, jungle cake fire. Yeah, we I still jungle got some pa unopened packs of those, believe Ooh. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're gonna dig through that eventually. Well, we didn't even we just did a jungle cake BX and everything, which people are finding some fire. We oh, you guys, found it. Yeah. We're still pheno hunting some of them, but um yeah, we used the uh jungle punch, which DZ also did. It was a jungle mm -hmm. cake uh purple punch, took a mail from that, then hit my cup winner of my jungle cake, and Ooh. that was how we developed the, the BX, which okay. yeah. They, got some unique terps the 40 ones definitely pounding through so what's your uh, favorite uh what's your favorite pheno of gelato oof i like the guava well i was honestly the guava is probably the best yielding out of all of them it is I, I like the guava it might yeah. not have as good a look as the 33 or the uh 41 but the, yep. the terps on the guava are unique like we the, did uh as you know we did do a, a collab with sherbinsky for the 41 bx we took the jealousy mail hit the original 41 cut mm -hmm. and i mean that thing is we're getting everything from uh free pebble cereal to straight gelato gas i mean everything in between and it's just blacked out every single pheno i mean oh. we be around twice just to be able to narrow it down to one also it's one of those if i pop those oh, it's yeah. gonna be hard to find a yes. keeper because you're gonna want to keep them all yeah <laughs> yeah which we try to force ourselves to pick one you know so that way, none of this, oh, A cut, B cut. No, it's like, this is the cut. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So people know if they buy a Tiki cut, they know that's my first choice. That's my selection. There's no there's no second second stringer out there. You know what I'm saying? So Okay. And these are all available on the site? Not all. You know, a lot. We, we make them available to, through a couple of nurseries to people. Uh, okay. Like King Kong, yeah, King Kong clones. They, they're authorized vendor. Um you know, a couple other sites in that Neptune network, you know, so. Okay. And, then, you know, there's a few nurseries around the country that sell my genetics that are authorized. You know, I, I like people to be able to get their hands on my genetics and run stuff and see what's up. You know, I like to. Oh, yes. I like to show, yeah, I want people to experience my genetics. and Your genetics speak for themselves. Like, yeah, every, I mean, every time we turn around, they, yo, I'm running tiki shit is fire. <laughs> you you never hear, like, I. Some people be capping like they they can't convince me they're getting fire out of these other people's gear, but they we can see the fire coming out of yours. Yeah, like I we, mean, the I, results think, I think, speak I think in the early days, a lot of guys were just, you know, re renaming stuff or holding stuff back because of. I don't know, maybe it was bullshit, but I didn't want to be that guy. I want to put my stuff out there like, hey, run it. You know, if you like it, the seeds are available, you know. Hell yes. So, I mean, what is what is Goliath? The Goliath strain? Yeah. I believe that was an in-house strain. I've never worked with it personally. Uh, oh. That would probably be a good question for Brandon from in-house rec. 
give him a, hit him up. And I remember correctly, sure. that's an in-house something they worked with her on the early days. Okay. Um, d- did you work with any skunk strains? No, I don't think I've ever found a real skunk strain person. Me neither. Me neither. I, do you, I think that's one of those ones that just aren't around anymore. I'd love to have that perk back, it. though. I mean, there's, there's guys that claim they have it. I mean, maybe skunk. I think skunk or in the early days was used to describe a profile, a turf profile. You know, it's called yes. like skunk or that burnt rubber. They, they call it skunk. They just slap skunk on the end of it because you guys got to remember back in the 80s and 90s, they weren't tracking strains like they are today. No. Like, there, there's no lineages. There's... You know, it's Uncle Pete and uh, his buddy that he met in Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? Like, they slapped. He got some seeds. They needed a name for it. You know what I'm saying? And, and it smelled, smelled like a skunk. Exactly. Isn't so, that how platinum, platinum cookies, uh, platinum anything, pretty much got its name as a description of it? Yep. It shines like a like platinum. Yeah, like platinum cookies from the forum. Exactly. Yeah. Platinum cookies because it was a forum cut. It wasn't the, you know. Yep. It wasn't the original. Um, someone's asking, uh, when breeding, do you breed specifically, I guess, for color? And can you breed colors in a certain strains? Yes, 100%. Yes and yes and yes. Yes and yes, yes. We've been, so not only color, but the bud structure. That's real big with purple. So if you go back to the purple Urkels, the Grand 80 Perps, they're extremely heavy on calyx leaf ratio, almost to a point where like it creates the bud to become very airy. Mm. breeding that out even for the last decade getting purple where it's just rock nugs you know what i'm saying yes. very little calyx leaf and that's you know so some of these guys show me these old purples it's like man we we went away from that over the last 10 years trying to develop what you see today like you know the plants grow it's very little leaf it's just rock hard bud purple yes. out, frosted out we've been trying to get to that point getting away from the gdp getting away from i mean they're fun to run still they're old school but We've been trying to get away from that. You know, yeah, we've been trying to get away from that high leaf to calyx ratio because the when they're like that, the, it opens the buds up more, and they, you're never gonna get dense bud. You know, I mean, I'm sure guys can got their ways and whatever, but I'm not gonna argue that. But essentially, the, the genetics aren't gonna allow that typically. So yes, uh, do you think that LEDs have completely changed the look of a lot of flower? Some degree, I could see that statement being true. Yeah, um, I know the new Tiki Ray LED that we just released. We basically copied a ceramic metal halide for the um, light spectrum. spectrum. Nobody's okay. ever done that. Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. We ain't gonna skip past the fact you got some LEDs. We got to talk about that. So, so what, what happened now? So basically, what happened was um, I was at a party, uh, at a, an event party, and, and a light manufacturer. Comes up and he goes, hey, uh, you know, I want you to run our lights. I'm like, I'm good, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm good right now. It's great that you're doing your thing. And he's like, no, I, I really want you to run our lights. So I pulled up a, a ceramic metal halide light spectrum with all the UV and far red, and I showed it to him. I go, if you can make a light like this, I'll run it. And he goes, okay, he screenshots it, and two months later, I got a guy banging on my door at home and opened up the door, and he's like, here's your light. Big ass box, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We hung, we hung the light and ran it, and it was like night and day. You know, plants are like this, praying twenty four seven. Um, I mean, you just it's night and day. Like all, even all my helpers are like, "What's going on with this light? Everything looks amazing." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, it's looking pretty good." So, contacted the manufacturer. I go, you know, what what's going on here? You know, this this light's hitting everything. And they sent me the light specs and everything. It was. It's identical to the uh, ceramic metal halide with all the far um, red and all the UV in there. The uh, only thing close is the Hortolux. Hortolux also makes really good LED, but they're expensive. They're like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. So he came nice. out with one, you know, nine hundred bucks out the door, free shipping, ready to go. So I said, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to find. Like we throw out lights every year. Like we buy the new stuff, we run them, have time to junk, we just throw them away. I mean, like we were always hunting for the next good light because. The problem with LEDs is um, you get lockout because there's a different leaf temperature to the air temperature, right? And you need yes. that difference for nutrients and stuff to run through the plant. That's what causes mm-hmm. the pressure. The plants don't have a heart. They can't pump it through their veins. So yes. they need that little bit of te- uh, temperature difference so they can create pressure to push product. And when the LED lights aren't putting on a UV, the ambient temperature and the leaf temperature are identical. So you're not mm-hmm. getting movement. That's what they call lockout. So 
just okay. now, like all, all these guys are realizing this when they're coming out with UV bars and this and that. And it's just okay. Like, yeah. So they realize they realize their problem. They're not going to call and say, "Huge problem here," you know. <laughs> no, they just hey, we got UV bars hey, available hey, 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 now. Check this out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Buy something else from us, you know. <laughs> so, Slaps right on to the light in the yeah, air. Yeah, there you go. That's why they all waste. Yeah. That's why they all race for it. Because so many people are having lockout problems. These are just. You know, they're not going to come out and say it, but that's what's going on. So do you think that was the final thing really separating like the yes. double ended lights from the. 100%. LEDs? Yeah. I mean, the I got to admit, though, the double ended uh, Gavito replacements, the one on ones that they just came out with. Mm -hmm. We've been running those in our drift rooms and they're phenomenal. Absolutely that's the Gavita LEDs, the bars, right? It's not the bar. It's the actual one to one replacement to replace the double ended. I don't think I've seen those ones. Yet. Yeah, they're they're built like a double ended. They're made just to swap right out. They still have the same heat signature as a double ended. So you have to redo wow. any of your room. You just boop, swap them out. And you're done. So it's supposed to be That's a real quick swap out. Okay. Yeah, they're 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 phenomenal. We had great luck with them. Yes, this is Tiki Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there was. Another... I hope so. I'm wearing his underwear. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the strain? What is the strain to breed for purple coloring? It's none of those strains that you just named. I'm gonna tell you that right now. No, it's, those are old purple strains, guys. Like, yeah, that's yeah. We way beyond that now. We've we've selectively hunted a lot further past that. So a a lot further. It, if you really want good purple to come out every time, anything with the trap cookies, anything with the sunset sherbet, um, you're gonna. And that's get a another lot. thing. That's how you know a real sunset sherbet cross because I've gotten some sunset sherbet cross that gave me nothing but green flowers. Mm -hmm. Like every variation is just straight green flowers. And I'm like, yo, I've I've had the real sunset when it first dropped, like the original one. And yeah. it was colorful. That was it, one of the things I liked the most about it. Yeah. And even if you go back to when uh, Jay did his Sunset BX, when uh, yeah. he released his, mm -hmm. those were off the fucking charts. Like yeah, super unreal. colorful. Not only that, but they slapped. It had better bud structure. Everything yes. it was just like 2.0. Boom! Here you go. He actually yep. absolutely killed that BX, mm -hmm. and that's where we hunted our males from because we were so impressed with the with pheno, every crawl. pheno was a keeper. So we're like, boom! We're using a male from this for sure. So because look at his lineage. Yeah, that when was the wedding crasher, like I believe. With, yeah, with the um, with the sherbet. So oh. I believe it, that's what that's what he used. But it was it was phenomenal. Uh. What sherb cake pheno was used in Pablo's Revenge? Um, that was actually the male we used. We hit it with the animal mints female. The sherb cake we hunted that came from BZ also. So I know Rado came out with one as well, but we we hunted the uh, the pack the sherb cake from uh, BZ. I'm a, I'm a big BZ fan. I know he talks a lot of shit about Tiki, but guys, I mean, at the end of the day, there's a reason why I work with his gear. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of his gear, and he, and he inspires me to do what I do. Just like I get a lot of uh, DMs from guys going, hey, can I breathe with your gear? If you bought it, absolutely. You own it. If it inspires you to create something, God bless. You know what I mean? Is I'm, that the I, issue? I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I think a lot of breeders, I, I get it. Sometimes I get frustrated seeing a guy drop a whole seed line with my stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, I tell myself, Hey, you're doing the same fucking thing, man. Like, grow up, you know. <laughs> Once so, you release I mean, them, it's up to the people what they want to do with it well, afterwards. I mean, yeah, and I mean, it's almost a compliment too, because that means that your gear is so goddamn good. Exactly. That, if that you inspired somebody to create all. something, like that, there's no bigger compliment on this planet. I mean, no, that's that's amazing. I mean, at the end of the day, that's amazing. So. Yeah, people Absolutely. hit me. Hey, that that strain you got? Can I? Do you care if I use it for a crawl? Man, send Absolutely. me back a pack. Send yep. me back a pack. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> After yep. you're done with the breed, send the pack back. Yeah. Um, what is this blue thing that everyone keeps on talking about? Is it some the name of the strain, or is it a color they're talking about? Yeah. There, no, there are some blues. Like we we're saying, the GG4 had that blue tinge to it. Mm -hmm. Um, Blue Dream had that blue tinge to it. You'll find you'll find some strains that literally have that blue tinge to it. Like we find an array of colors. I get the. Uh, I get like that indigo all the way to that like um, lavender to velvet red. I, it really depends on the strains. And you just got to phenol hunt to find what you're looking for. And you got to have, um, like I said, you got to have your light styled in. You got to hit, hit those cooler temps at night down to like, you know, 60. You got to make sure your bricks are high. You know, you're running over eight bricks. And as long as the temperature. Oh, so even, even bricks play a part in this. Bricks is the major part. That's what brings all your color out. 100%. Wow. 100%. So everybody this whole time been thinking it's just temperature no, and all got, that stuff. The, so what happens is the bricks are high, so the sugar's metastasized in the plant. That's all the colors come out. 
Wow. When you lower and, that temp, it just, boom, it blows those those sugars apart. And that's where all those colors come in. So you got to have the genetics, the sugars, and the temps typically. Some plants just come in purple right off the rip. Like my sherbet ripple. Just day, automatically. Day 14, you got purple buttons sitting there no matter what. So Wow. It's yeah. one of those deep purples. Oh, yeah. Just nuts. So, you know. I knew I knew this was going to be a question for a lot of people. <laughs> so Brix and it's BR, it's B R I X. If yeah. you're going to be looking it up, it's B R I X. But but go ahead. They, I knew they were going to ask about this. Bricks is uh, your sugar levels inside your plants, and typically, so plant produces its own sugars through photosynthesis, right? So if the plant's getting everything it needs, it should have the correct bricks. But not always. Not all strains will do this. So sometimes you got to. You got to cheat Mother Nature a little bit and increase those sugar levels. The way you do that is like molasses, sugarcane. Um, they sell those elements at all your hydro stores. So the trick is you got to start loading those things up right from day one because the plants already produce their own sugars. So you're trying to add more, and that's a complex sugar. The plant's not going to want to take it. Typically, it's like a carb load. So mm -hmm. a complex sugar is just a carbohydrate. So you want to – you got to start loading that stuff early early like like i said as soon as the, those clones have roots you want to start pumping that stuff in there and all the way through to the end of flower because not only that but it'll help with all your microbes if you're growing organically it'll help with all the microbes at the uh, yep. root level um they've got they've got multiple benefits that have been proven that's why every line typically has a sugar additive or a carb load or something like that so that'll that should bump up your bricks your sugar content and the way you check that is with a bricks meter so You'd squeeze a little bit of juice. They do it in the wine industry. They even do it for your radiator. Yeah. They use the refractor meter. They squeeze a little bit of juice and then you look through it and it'll give you your bricks reading. The first time I ever heard of yeah, the first time I ever the roof. Yeah, the first time that I heard of bricks was from I believe this Dutch guy, the, the guy who runs raw MPK. Yeah. Yeah. That Harley. was the very yes. That was yeah, the Harley's first time from, I, he's from Michigan. He's from Lansing. He's a genius. If you oh, ever get is. a chance to check out his um, some of his podcasts on, uh, it'll bore the hell out of you. But listen, and you don't want to stop you. listening, though. You just <laughs> don't want to stop listening. Yeah, like it's so much information. information. Yeah, he's 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 uber smart, silly. So definitely a good guy to uh, pull some information off of for you younger growers. Look up Harley from HDI on uh, Go or um, on YouTube. He, a lot of his stuff is on there. Some is a little dated. But the core information, it's going to hold true to this day. So, yep. Um, the ice cream cake that you use is a pheno you hunted yourself? Yes, 100%. Okay. Mine too. A lot of guys still run that here in Michigan. Some of the big warehouse growers still run that. Um, oh, it's your cut of ice cream cake that yeah. most of them are running. Yeah. Okay. We hunted it from uh, the drop. I found again. a killer Easy cut to... of ice cream cake when I did my pheno hunt. Honestly, I, I, think, I saw the one that everybody else was using. Uh, it, it, yeah. it was nice, but. Had you hunted those packs yourself? Yeah, Shit. we did. We did. We hunted a few packs, and we love our cut. It's a heavy, heavy yielder, lots of color. It's got the, to me, it's got the real ice cream cake terps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we did for the BX, we took the Icy Sherbert, which is the ice cream cake cross sunset. Ooh. Took that mail, hit my I crossed it back bug. to the. Yeah, for the BX, and it's it's phenomenal. It yields. I always say I think that's what Jay was going for for the Terps because it's got that ultra sweet sherbet in there, you know, gelato sherbet flavor, like over the top on the BX. It's just pure purple and it's frosted the fuck out. And I love, mm. I absolutely love that strain. I've got so many guys screaming like, "Bro!" He's like, "They're like, everybody's buying ice cream cake again." You know, it's <laughs> we got to do another round of it. Yeah, yeah. So real popular cut is the BX that we did. I absolutely blown away you know with the bx every once in a while you hit one of those bx's that are just it's golden uh, yeah like my runs bx was like that the ice cream cake bx was like that i mean a lot of those bx's we run i, I hate to say it but they turn out better they, they got the vigor they again they got the health again they got they had just that little bit of injection of foreign but also remember when when they did this they took what they initially saw and and that's what they used so when they created ice cream cake they found the one that they found and it was super amazing. Boom. That's the ice cream cake. Right. But you pop those seeds and you like, wait, I found something better than that one. And yeah. you be and you be exit back and it's like, yo, this is actually the one. They they skipped this step right here. 
I would like to hear how you would answer this question. How can you increase Terps? All right. So Terps, Terps essentially are the oils the plants are producing, correct? So again, it comes back to bricks to some degree. It's giving the plants mm -hmm. proper feed. But a lot of th one thing that a lot of people understand is temperature and environment on terps. It's huge. <laughs> They're volatile. They're very volatile. So if you run, like, say, a little hot, an orange terp will turn to a lemon terp. Um, environment. Wow. Yes. I mean, it's only a few degrees. So if you're running above 75, you're going to have a completely different terp profile than somebody at 72, 73. With the same exact strain. You know, same cut. You know, so there's a lot. There's a French word. I forget the name for it. But they talk about how environment, the soil, the air, everything in influences the terps. Uh, I forget the word. Maybe somebody listening knows it. But it, I, I believe that's a harmless spot spot on like your environment and what you're feeding your plants and how the temperature everything that will that will affect your turf profile more than anything i didn't believe this until and sometimes it'll even change the look of the plant too oh, i've 100%. given i've All given people a cut and they've grown it and i'm like did i give them the yeah, wrong is that cut, cut? <laughs> is that, yeah. did i give them the wrong cut like, did i mislabel this one like that ain't no way that that i'm uh, no bro i'm gonna hook you up with some of the flower and you're like no this this is it yep. but this looks completely different and when i switch from hps to led I also noticed a huge difference. Some of my strains started doing shit they've never done. Right. They took on bud structures that they've never had before. Bud structure, like, frost production, colors. Yes, that, that they bit. never gave off before. It looked like a completely different plant. We've been growing LED now for, I want to say, at least a solid five, six years. Mm -hmm. And it was a rough transition, man. Uh, originally, <laughs> like I said, there was a lot of bad information out there. The blurples on. came out. Well, everybody's and... like, oh, you got to run it at 82 degrees and... No, we're we're running seventy two degrees still, guys. Nice and chilly. flower. Oh yeah. Oh okay. It doesn't yeah, look at the, look where the plant comes from. It comes from you know the mountains of Pakistan. Mountains. It doesn't get 70, 80 degrees up in the mountains during you know, during the, the during the fall. That's we're not cool, guys. You know we're not we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. God did it right the first time. I, I agree a hundred percent. What do you think about uh, temp swings? What do you think about the five or two? two degree temp swing thing from day to nighttime temperature uh it needs to be 20. there's a 20 we call it a diff in the nursery industry you have to have that 20 degree diff have to otherwise your plants are gonna be confused as fuck uh, now you, you want, got now you now not only did we 58 62 at minimum at night now not only did you guys hear us say it you're hearing it from somebody else now because when people always talk this five degree temperature swing, I'm like, in what world does any? You're not plant creating enough pressure for the plant to gas off. You have Thank that you. plant. That plant has to gas off. Like, it and is that the reason when you do the twenty percent temperature swing? If you go in at night, you'll see your CO two ppm skyrocket in the middle of the night. Well, It'll that's, that, that's what we were talking about. The far red. If you run that far red fifteen minutes before lights down, that'll yeah. skyrocket within fifteen minutes of the light drop. Oh, normally but, it's like halfway ooh, through the sleep inside. Right, because the plants think they're still awake trying to figure out why the sun went away. Okay, okay. That far red diff, it'll tell the plants to start switching over right now. That's why you're shaving time off because the plants are up another five, six hours trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. And then you add that up God. over a 63-day <laughs> yeah. period and exactly. you earned yourself some more time. Boom, there it is. Wow, never even thought about that. Yeah, because normally you go in about six hours after lights yep. off. You see you'll huge check spike. your CO2 and you'll see a huge spike in your yep. CO2. And that's them off gassing. But with the far red, it, it tells like them 20 minutes. minutes the off. So now yep. they're getting their actual proper sleeping time because at sunset, it does this naturally outdoor. You'll yep. go out there towards the end of the day and you'll just see the plants already sleep. The sun yep. isn't already down, but you'll right. see the plants the all starting to hang a little bit. All like knocked off. And sometimes it gets scary because you'll go back there and be like, wait a second, you just had water. You look fine. Yeah. They are knocked out. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're done for the day. See you later. So the plants, wow. I mean, typically, from my understanding, when we talked to uh, some of the botanists, they said cannabis is only absorbing maybe seven hours of light, six hours of light a day, anyways. So I've never, I've never had a day where there was 12 hours of light outside. Nope. I've never woke up at six o'clock and the sun was out and nice. And then six o'clock in the afternoon, it's still out and nice. Like, yeah. no, I've, I've never seen it. Well, never seen it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these guys, especially it's pushed by the nutrient companies a little bit. That It's like mm. uh, 
it's like the bodybuilder mentality, right? You know, just keep pumping this in there and keep doing this and just up, up, up everything. Yep. And you'll get bigger and better plants. Do you? These, <laughs> I don't these know. plants have the genetics to do what they do. They just they need what they need. That's it. Yeah. I mean, what do you do for take more? Some plants take less. We still run like when we run R and D rooms, we run at like 750 ppms. That's it. You see, We've been saying this reproduce. stuff and no one believed us. Yeah. I think yeah, it's we, cleaner smoke. You can't flush the stuff out of the plants. It's not like they have a butthole. You know, you give them yeah, fresh exactly. water and the nutrients come out the other end, you know? Yeah. Like they have to they have to eat what they have already stored. If it's too much, I mean, they're only going to take what they're going to take. And especially towards the end, when they're dying, they're not going to just eat up everything. You know what I'm no. saying? Like they're dying. They're still, they're going to stop doing that. So the, a true good a good flush, you want like a super flavorful smoke, whether organic or uh, on salts or synthetics, whatever you want to call it, like lower ppm you always get a smoother smoke every time every time and i don't even think it's necessary for 1500s most of the time like i what are you using that got you that high because when i use what's recommended the ppms never come in at no 12 to 15 no, 1200 tops thousand tops usually yeah yep uh, yeah, what, we even run lower than that we run about 750 800 yep what, what nutrient do you like uh well in r d rooms we run um Emerald Harvest. We really like their nutrients. Okay. We've run from day one since they dropped them. Uh, we run those just in flower, like I said, in our Dean rooms. Just because we've run forever, we're, we've been measuring anything. We know exactly what to put in there and it's done. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our drift rooms, we're running Athena. We've had great results with the high EC diet, you know, just because that's what a lot of facilities are doing. We wanted to check out what they were doing with the with the drip system and the cocoa and all that. So we ran that and uh, we, we see great results in those also. I mean, there's a there's a there's a few different. There's no wrong way or right way. It's it's whatever way you enjoy the plant and the style you enjoy growing with the results that you want. I mean, that's what as a grower, that's how you should be experiencing the plant, right? I mean, if you like, you know, aero, aeroponics or hydroponics or or organic. I mean, if that's what you're into. I mean, dive all into it. I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. You know, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, like part of the plan is the smoke. The other part of the plan is the plant itself. Enjoying growing it, you know, um, enjoy, you know, taking care of it, watch it succeed in the system that you developed, you know, especially for a home grower. I mean, nothing's more gratifying than that. Right. Yes. Uh, taste wise, do you prefer organic or synthetic? A lot of stuff I like the best is actually a blend, the synthetic okay. with the organic blend. I think that, the plant gets the best of both worlds. It'll take what it wants when it wants. And I that's my favorite. I get the most turfs, most flavors out of that, you know, with a nice weak uh cure on the on the bud, you know, once it's capped and jarred. Um you I, said I, one week cure? Typically right around that. You know, I, I kind of like I don't like it too old. I like it kind of fresh. I like to taste a little bit of freshness still. <sighs> that's I agree. Me. Everybody's got their own thing. I, I I hear people cure for months and weeks. I'm like, are we making pickles or trying to smoke some gas? I, I don't know what be going on anymore. Like I said, <laughs> a lot of those questions that guys get in fights over, I mean, they're their opinions. Why fight it about is. an opinion, you know? Like, I'm not good. Like, you like this, you're wrong. Like, no, man, it's awesome. No, we it's both like what we like. Cool. Yeah. like That's the fun part about being humans. We all don't have yeah. to be the same. Why argue it? You know, I try to change somebody's mind about what they like. And that's, yep. that's, that's insanity to me. Like, yeah, it's like, and you're not gonna, And if I'm curious why you like it that way, I want to ask questions to educate myself. Cause maybe I am wrong. Maybe I want to try your way, you know? Yeah. That just maybe it'll curious, make so. sense when you explain it to me. Yeah. I'm not going to come up and be like, Oh no, that's, that's not right. It's like, no, that's, that's an opinion. There's no wrong or right. That's whoever, and, whoever's holding the opinion is always right. You know? So. Yeah. Uh, indoor or outdoor. No oh, man, you guys are killing me here. I'm an indoor guy, you know that. Like I said, again, if you love the outdoor thing, we used to actually run autos here in Michigan um, and then harvest like peak sun, middle of July. And I'll tell you what, that weed on those autos tasted like the old school Sun Valley Mexican brick. Like you could taste the sun. <laughs> it was killer. Like we went to a wedding one time with a bunch of that. And like all the old guys that were, you know, in the 60s, all smoking it for the first time again. And, you know, 20 years are like, this, this is perfect. This is just like I tasted at blah, blah, blah festival. Back in 60, <laughs> da, da, da. So like you could literally taste the Michigan sun. So that was really freaking cool. Like that was okay. Neat. Yeah, that was that was cool. So again, environment. 
It's going to inf inflex on the terps a little bit. It's going to change the plant's flavor. So, like yes. I said, again, that's an opinion. <laughs> you know, It is. Because I prefer outdoor. And I don't care about the people who prefer indoor. And I'm not going to try to change your mind about it. I just tell people what I like. That's, I mean, that's I've had it. phenomenal indoor. I've had phenomenal outdoor. And I Same here. Same here. It's just something about the outdoor. Maybe just because I'm a nature person that I just prefer the outdoor. I don't know what it is. I could be tricking myself into just thinking it's better. I mean, some of, I found like some of the orangier stuff tastes better outdoors. You know, like I think like okay. the, you know, the grapefruits or the orange, orangey strains, you know, mm -hmm. some, some more of the yeah. yeah, I feel like a lot of that stuff tastes better outdoors, more complex. You know, it's a little deeper. And you can you, you know what? Indoor. You're right. Because Girl Scout cookie tastes better from indoor. I, I prefer, like if I if I like girls, if I want some Girl Scout cookie, I want an indoor grown. Yeah, like gelato is the same way, right? It's a lower yes. like, strain. It's lower feeder. She probably does just fine indoors, outdoors. Yes. Not yes. All the gelato way. I've got that pretty much came from outdoor. Just, I don't know. <laughs> not a fan? Nah. <laughs> I, I, I prefer the indoor one if I'm going to smoke it at all. Yeah, yes, gas doesn't had, do like, well outdoor uh, either. Yeah, like even like the sunshine number four. Up here in Michigan, and won a bunch of cups. Outdoor grown just blew anything indoor away, in my opinion. Oh, um, just it crushed outdoors. It just crushed outdoors. Yeah, it just tasted so good. Yeah. So, no, no uh, organic outdoor or. Yeah, I mean, typically most, most guys people run, who are outdoor run. Yeah, organic. they're already run organic, and they might substitute something in like week four, week five, just to get the plant over the finish line. You know. Okay. Um, this is what I'll see sometimes if they're you know. The plants eating heavier than I thought, or you know. Okay, uh, soil or cocoa? You do both, right? We actually use Pro Mix, so it's kind of okay. a hybrid. But we also do cocoa. Uh, okay. Straight real soil, we stay away from indoor. There's too many bugs and shit that come in on that soil. Guys, it's a lot of risk. A lot of risk. Even the Pro Mix, we were unplugged. We'll, we'll pull a soil core out and send it to the local university. See what's in there. We'll mm -hmm. find. We'll find fungus gnat larvae. Eggs also, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't, you know, they're like, oh, it's clean. It's you know, no, no. So, That's I mean, cocoa, cocoa's good. Uh, talking to some growers last year, uh, down in Oklahoma, uh, they're testing positive for cadmium. The cocoa was heavy in cadmium, so mm -hmm. you're gonna run into problems with any substrate, unfortunately. You guys are using, oh, it. yes, oh, yes. It's it's always going to be issues. Do you get the? Do you prefer the cocoa bricks or bags? Um, the cocoa we use is the bags because it's easy. Just plug and play, go. You know. Okay. Um, then we cut the bags. We recycle the bags. The cocoa goes into. It's one and done. The cocoa you know, with the root ball goes into the compost pile. Uh, okay. Once we're done running them, but the bags are really small and they are recyclable. The plastic bags. Yeah. 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 So uh, we What's like cocoa that. brand. Uh, Floorflex. Floorflex cocoa. We really like Floroflex cocoa. We've oh, you mean the, the squares they send you? Yeah, they actually do bags also. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've we've had it tested. It's super super clean. So hell yeah. We just went through tested uh, their their new cocoa uh, cubes for for rooting. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're having problems. We're seeing some problems. Some of the old uh, riot cubes. So we're having those tested. Some came back. Everyone uh, was saying mold. that. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, we just found all this out in the last few weeks because, I mean. <laughs> You've been running one way for a year, and then you see some problems. Like, what the hell's going on? So, so they just got pump the brakes, get everything tested, figure out what the hell's going on, so you guys get get a better game plan out of how to go forward. So, what what pH do you run your Pro Mix at? The actual Pro Mix or the the feed? Pro Mix should be fairly neutral when it comes in. So typically we run a five eight um, on our feeds. Okay, we don't. I have think any that's issues. what they were asking. Okay. Probably should yeah. be fairly neutral. I mean, there's there's peat in there, so it might run a little hot, which means it'll run uh, like a six six two to a six eight maybe. Yeah, because yeah. of the uh, organic makeup of the peat. You know, depending on how far and how hot it's been and how it's going to break down. Same thing with like water, right? When you run colder water, your pH is very low compared to hotter water, where your pH is higher because of the amount of CO two it could absorb. Well, there's your answer, you guys. And they said root rise changed their material. Oh, yeah, they're shit now. I yeah, wish so I could say do. different. We're not using yeah. them anymore. It is what it is. Is ocean forest too heavy? Uh, ocean forest. Yeah, there's a lot of hot. microbes and stuff in there, guys. If you're it's a gamer, hot shit. I mean, it's hot. It's a super soil at the end of the day. I mean, yes. Definition wise, it's preloaded. So 
If you're that but guy, they don't tell you that. They they give you that bag and also tell you to get the Fox Farm lined up right along with it. So I, mean, I said we, so many we, growers fail from that. Some of, I, I don't know what soil brown was. We found soil mites in there, you know, and soil mites aren't bad. It's a predatory, but they're made mm -hmm. to kill fungus gnat larvae. So why are they putting that in this? <laughs> you know, they're putting more stuff in there. Guys are freaking out like, oh, my God, I got root aphids. And then, you know, we look at it and it's like, no, that's a soil aphid. You're fine. Or. Or we find springtails all the time in almost yeah. every soil. You'll find springtails, and most guys freak out the first time they see those. Like, oh my god, I got root aphid. No, that's a springtail. They're beneficials, guys. So yeah, sometimes you got to know what you're looking at. Yeah, so like your mites, right? You you can always tell a predatory mite compared it to a uh, a regular mite by usually their front pinchers. Mm -hmm. So if 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 they're eating the plants, they got short ones. If they're looking to grab other insects, they got long long front. Okay. Arm, so they can grab on them and then eat them. They okay. Pierce them. So if you see something on a scope that's got really long front legs, odds are it's it's a predatory mite. So they may, shorter I mean, one. They can come in from outdoors or yeah, you see the shorter ones, odds are those mites are gonna be sucking off your plants. So kind of a general term, but you've been around them. I'm 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 a member of the entomology society here in Michigan. So I got a good resource batch to really look at some of these when I get stumped even. So Oh, okay. Man, that got to be good to have. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah and right to the lab. Yeah. They get a little weird when the cannabis guys walk in the room because they're all like, oh, God, this guy. You know? There we go. <laughs> but you, you geek out with them. They're used a to us. Yeah. Yeah. They're they like, you're to us. Guy like the rest of everybody else. So you're okay. Yeah. Get used to us. We coming. Uh, exactly. Any other updates for the people that they need to know? We actually, um, I don't know if you can see this. Neptune's doing something really cool right now. Can you see this? Yep. Right so, there. Yep. You see it, Neptune Nursery Sample Collection. Yeah. They're going to be offering TC services to everybody off all their websites. So you'll be able to uh, uh, buy the collection kit, go online, register register your sample set, send it in, and they'll, they'll run a whole TC, you know, clean the plant. You got a couple different options. Same labs we use. Phenomenal. Like, it, it's going to change a lot. Some of those old OGs we were talking about and all that. Mm -hmm. It'll be able to save some of those plants through the whole process, clean them out completely, or if you got PM or bugs, you know, you'll send them in and get some of the surface mount out just through like a regular Meristem. Also reset the genetics back to day one. That's the nice thing about the Meristem technique that they can do is uh, it'll take the genetics back to like it was originally right from seed. It'll even grow taproot the whole nine yards. So very Beautiful. cool that, yeah, very cool that Neptune and the nursery guys over there have been working hard to be able to bring because it's the first time it's been brought to like everybody like it's available to everyone usually this tech's been so expensive and out of reach for the caregiver or just a small commercial person that it just they couldn't do it and you know it's it's frustrating because there's diseases and viruses and there's 28 there's roughly 20 different pathogens and viruses that affect cannabis on a daily level. So mm. a lot of time guys think it's nutrient or light or something's going on. It's, it's just disease. It's just disease. And even that we, there's even what they call phytobites inside the plants, which is just a naturally occurring bacteria, which could either be beneficial or harmful to the plant production. I didn't even, I just learned about these last year and like those could affect the plant and production and um, how it grows and operates for you. So, the TC is cool. It takes it back to like it was coming around out of that 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 seed shoot right from the right from the beans. So I okay. think it's pretty cool that Neptune's bringing this technology to everybody. Hell yes. Um, yeah, I think it's yeah, it's not gonna be for everybody, you know. So it's, but for those who need, man, I I needed this a little while ago because I actually lost the strain the hops and it could yeah. have been saved. Yeah, and they could clean it now. So yeah, so that, that would have been there. very good. And even the testing for hops has come a long way because the initial PRC testing used to test down to what we call baseline. So the testing company would have to load that baseline. So there may be 100,000 strips of RNA in there. And they say it's clean because it's below or it's it's below that 100,000 mark. You okay. follow? So the new testing, they're actually testing down almost zero. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So, it's either so they can find minor. anything. Yeah, it's either it's there or it's not. So okay. a lot of the old companies, they'd run the baseline and they come back clean. But guess what? It's still in there. And if you stress the plants, it's going to come out it's over time. Out. That's why they call it latent because that virus is building back up. And, and the more stress you put on the plant, the more yeah, that characteristic exactly. That's will start exactly to come it. out. You could run plants for decades and never know that you have that virus because you never stressed it. It's it's kind of like herms, right? You stress the plant the wrong way, it's going to come out. So it's going to show okay. itself. So 
that's what we've seen with it. You know, talking to people in the industry, um, we test constantly our our, our genetic stock now, like just t- constantly, because the plant can transfer through scissors. It can transfer through through plant to plant contact. So if you have yeah, people got their own scissors for each mom now. I'm hearing we do, yeah. So either that or use disposable razors. Like we'll use a pair of not even scissors, well sh- surgical shears, and then when we're done with that, we scrub them down. We put them in the um, the autoclave pouch, and they get autoclaved. So they're like brand new okay. coming out the following week. So there's a lot of protocols that we've taken from the TC side that we've introduced into just our standard uh, traditional cloning side as well. So just to be on the safe side now. Have to be. I mean, you got to be vigilant. That's why we test our moms constantly. All their, even our moms never even touch. You know, they're all divided out. The moms, I, they come out of a gel cup right to... You know what I'm saying? They're a little spot and they never touch another plant ever. Just the, man. That, yeah, that virus can transfer from plant to plant with the plant same plant. Plant to plant. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We didn't even know that was possible. Plants not long ago. Yeah, we had a big lecture on it like a year and a half, two years ago, saying, Yeah, uh, uh, it was an Indian doctor, I forget his name, but he came out and said the whole thing. Brilliant man. And he's like, Yep, this is 100 percent now. We'll transfer from plant to plant. Uh, best way to clean your guys' stuff uh, is just a one part to nine part water bleach to water solution. That'll eradicate any RNA 100% from what we're told. We, and obviously, the protocols have worked. It's, it, we've definitely beat it out of our garden. So, we but, if had you, any, but if you yeah, need extra help, Neptune's we have we bring in clones. We test those right away. <laughs> Immediately. Coming from. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't go without Just part of the business, guys. You know, I mean, shit's going to pop up. We didn't even know what it was. Probably still wouldn't know what it was if it wasn't for the fact that. Um, hemp was legalized. So we had access now to yes. all these labs. I mean, yes. we're so lucky right now, guys. I mean, we're, we're finding shit that we didn't even know existed before. I mean, nope. we're figuring out quick in real time, finally. So getting good. And data I've seen points. this problem in plants before years ago, but I had, but I had no idea what it Nobody was. Did. I, no, I remember watching Medicropper. He kept having issues with these plants and they were just like weak and flimsy. And he was saying so many different things was wrong with them. And years later, come to find out, it was hops the whole time and he's still having those problems. <laughs> so, but, but now with things like Neptune, we can, we can get our plants back. Start to cleaning them, but just remember guys, like keep your mom separate. Don't let them touch, you know, just keep, you got to keep certain protocols in place to keep everything clean. And uh, st- a lot of guys are like, Oh, I dipped them. Great. But there was plant material on those before you dipped them. You got to yes. clean, then sanitize guys. You know, that's why I tell just safe. use the disposable razors, throw them away yeah. after every mom. You know, that's it. That's it. I see people that got scissors for each mom now. Uh, the razor as well that'll work. Get yeah. the disposable boom, boom. But even the scissors, button. like because you got, like I said, you got to clean them completely and then sterilize. Yep. So we clean them, we sterilize, then we autoclave them so they're Smart. brand new for the following week. Smart, so, yeah. Autoclave is the big, big help in the cloning industry. You definitely need to get one if you don't. Okay, any new updates on the gear? Um, we just did that big drop with Big L, Huge, smashing success. I want to thank everybody that grabbed uh, the, the the power pack because we did the we threw in a free pack of the cartel runs. Ooh. We released a ton of these packs, like record setting. This? Everybody's like, "Oh, the seeds are down." Well, guess what? We just sold more packs than we ever sold in our lives this weekend. So I want to thank everybody for that, and I can't wait to see the fire that everybody finds in those packs, the Gushers BX and the cartel runs. Pop those seeds. Find some cartel people. runs. What is that? That's the Pablo cross with the runs. Yeah. Boom. Okay. <laughs> you Boom. know that's gonna be some color and some fire yes. there. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm. We found some killer. I mean, there's still there's some of, available. Yeah, I think there are, might, might be a few more available. I mean, we dropped a lot, and uh, Neptune was saying the other day when I talked to him, he's like, they're almost gone. I'm like, what? I we figured it'd take you know a while to sell them all. I couldn't believe okay. how fast they sold. So again, oh, thank you, all my. Uh, supporters out there for having them so right now seeds the seed make games down guys the, the 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 production price is down you know for flour right now guys don't have that extra few bucks to pick up a pack of seeds we're seeing it in the seed industry big time so the fact that this drop was so successful i, I really really want to thank everybody because i mean shout out to ya yeah i mean without them buying it you know it's <laughs> just be sitting here you with can't a keep of- everything running yeah yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited for the for the. But that speaks volumes. 
that speaks volume on what you've been proven as a breeder, that even when seeds are down, even when sales are down or everything, just the drop having your name attached to it. Yes. People know it's the guarantee. The issue is seed sales aren't down. People can't afford no bullshit right now. So they're going yeah. to people who they have uh, good reputations with. They're asking around and everybody, yo, it's fire. Yo, it's fire. Yo, OK, now I feel safe getting it because there's there's a new breeder every day. Well, there's a new yeah. hot cross every day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we did the, that's why I always do power packs, you know, because mm -hmm. like we've got like the, the seed banks want to make a certain amount of money on every drop. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I got to ask myself, Tiki, how, how do you, how do you kind of work around that? And the way I do it is by adding free stuff in because the seed bank doesn't care what I put in there. You know what I'm saying? No. As long as they're selling for that price. Exactly. So that's my way of hooking up my peeps. Like, Hey, I threw in a free pack of this and ask anybody out there that's one of my free packs. It's I, I sneak the I sneak the heaters in there. I do that on purpose because that's just my sense of humor, you know, because yeah. like, that's where space jello came from. I mean, like the list goes on and on. That's where uh Singapore Sling came from. Those were freebies, guys. T and and straight like fire. He, he likes to sneak in the fire on the <laughs> on the line because I'm gonna just <laughs> yeah, so you go in there they, thinking you about to get some. They're like, oh, my God, you know, that's my sick sense of humor. But, I mean, is that sick? You get what I'm saying? Like, No, that's fire. I like that. That's a nice little gimmick right there. You order is. some fire, Ask and then you get it, and, and he done snuck like, some dude. fire in they're there. Like, yeah, <laughs> those freebies, definitely fuck with those over the even the peg that he dropped. But freebies that just be a bad name now. Found total fire. I used the Yakuza, which is the uh, Gushers uh, Sunset Share BX I was telling you about just slaps i mean it's amazing we took that mail and then backed it into the gushers for the bx terpy we got that gusher snows to it it's more purple and more frosty really excited about that bx um you know big al was involved we used his gushers cut uh, which mm -hmm. big up anybody knows the history is he's the one that blew gushers up right so he sold okay. in backpack shops he sold in uh cookie shops he sold all over uh Really cool cat. If you ever get to meet him, definitely sit down and talk one with him. He's he's good people. So, hell yeah, yeah. Uh, let them know where they can find you at. Who me? Yep. Let them know oh, where they can um, find you at. IG. It's uh, uh at Tiki Man Man, or we got another one. It's at Tiki Man Man X. That's the fem line. Um, you can also check out TikiManMan.com to see the authorized IG sites, authorized vendors for clones, seeds. Everything's on there. out here, people. Go go to the official one, get over to his yes. page, and go to that one. Yeah, so anything bought on an official site, we guarantee. You have problems popping a seed. Your dog eats the pack. Doesn't matter. I will replace that. You buy it off a third party, a vendor. You buy it off of an auction site. You know, buyer beware. You know what I'm saying? Always buy off of legit sites because yes. there's two points there. Somebody could tamper with the pack, swap the seeds. Or they can be stored improperly, which will cause poor performance of the season. Mm. So when you guys buy stuff from Neptune or TikiManMan.com, literally the day those those that drops, that's when the seeds go out to uh, the bank. So they're shipped real fast. Like everything's fresh. Everything's guaranteed. If you guys are storing your seeds, store them in the fridge or freezer, not a shoebox underneath your bed, you know, give yourself – the advantage, do it right. It's simple. Give yourself you know, a fighting don't... chance with them. You paid a lot yeah, of money for like... those seeds. Make sure they'll germinate yeah, later. This game's tough enough, man. Don't be starting inventing, you know, fake enemies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yep. do things right. You guys will be all right. So, hell yes, man. Thank you for coming on. Uh, for sure. All Hopefully, everybody know can this. make it out to uh, Denver. Those of you that have the resources and ability to get out there, definitely come out, hang out, with Tiki. Maybe get a tiki drink after the show. <laughs> and get some exclusive shit that you can't get. Yeah. When people see what I'm bringing, lights out. Forget it. There's going to be a lot of grown men crying. And you got to go there to find out what it is. But thank you, yeah. man. Can't wait to have you back on. Sponsor of the channel, man. Y'all give a shout out for Tiki Mad, man. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Love your show. Thank you for everything you do. Hell yes. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Man, another great one. In the books. Who else bringing them to y'all like the green table, man? Ain't nobody else bringing y'all the information like the green table. Ain't nobody dispelling the myths like the green table. Ain't nobody trying to prevent y'all from running into brick walls like the green table. Ain't nobody teaching y'all how to produce fire like the green table is. 
we telling you about the myths it is bro science and you can't have this temp swing and you got to have it like this and if you don't nail this part right here you're gonna no no, no. they're taking the fun out of growing that also decreasing your chances of hitting big yields simply by having y'all do too much the way that i dry is i hold plant hang chop the plant from the bottom hang it upside down 10 to 14 days done boom um but yes, and, and you guys heard Tiki say it. I got another interview coming up for you guys with a large scale grower where you'll be able to get some information about this as well, because I want you guys to start having fun growing again. I want you guys to take a liking to growing again and having fun doing this and just enjoying it. So make sure that you like. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you hit that notification bell. Make sure that you spread the word that we over here getting active on the Green Table Podcast. Thank everybody for coming. Y'all go enjoy your night. And until next time, Beast Coast, baby. Yeah. And I hope all is well. And if not, I hope you get well and stay well. What's up with your Green Table family? I hope all is well, and if not, I hope you get well and stay well. Make sure that you visit Miracrop.com. That is Miracrop.com for all of your souvenir needs. Make sure that you support the channel. Visit the Patreon. Visit Frosty McNasty Patreon. Visit Beast Coast Grower Patreon for all exclusive content and for first dibs on access to the souvenirs. So that is Miracrop.com. Make sure that you visit it. Like, subscribe, comment, 